Holy crap, I was go. muted for that entire time. <laughs> We're off to a fantastic start. You all right. All over again. I know, I just realized I had. Hold on. All right, you know what? Let's fix that. Okay, we should be all right. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Welcome. Welcome to episode three of the Virtual Wasteland Show. We're off to a wonderful start. Uh, I was just saying I've got a bunch of energy because I'm over caffeinated from our wonderful sponsor, Madhouse Coffee Co. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode. We're going to be doing some rad coffee cocktails later in our mixology segment. Um, and we're going to be talking to our wonderful guest who I, uh, I love this guy. Um, I, I do want to preface that our last guest, Mr. Tom, uh, was a drummer in a band that I'm currently in. I just realized that our guest now was also a drummer in a band I was in. I swear I'm not just trying to get drummers as my guests. Um, we have Jeff Aiken on the show, uh, so let me go ahead and pop it over to him. What's up, everybody? How you doing? And you should, David, you really should only have drummers on the show. If you want anything quality, you want some good on here, drummers, man, I'm telling you. Uh, you have to leave, David, because you're a bassist. Yeah. I know. Jeff, I'm so excited to have you on the show here. Uh, we're going to play a tiny little tidbit for him to kind of give you guys a little information on what Jeff is all about. And then we're going to go into uh, some more detail here. So let's check right this out. Right off the bat, somebody recognizes Jeff and right. knows that they voted for that guy. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Look at that! Oregon City. A beautiful city. The birthplace of Oregon. A city ready for change. Ready for new leadership. We do live in a wonderful city full of amazing people. My name is Jeff Aiken. For 20 years, I've worked as a transformational leader. I build teams that collaborate to solve complex problems, and I empower individuals to help them unleash their potential. As a husband and the father of an amazing daughter, I love our community. This is a city where you know your neighbors. We have a history and a heritage that is rich and deep we have a vibrant and exciting business community. But our neighborhoods are being divided by social and political unrest. Our business community is struggling, as we all are, with the response to the pandemic, not to mention government bureaucracy. Our past has brought us here, but the future is in our hands. Our society is at a crossroads. We can go one of two ways. We can fall into chaos, fear, and uncertainty, or we can emerge stronger, united, and better than ever before. To do that, we must come together under solid and confident leadership. The leadership that I, Jeff Aiken, will provide as a member of the City Commission. So I am officially declaring my candidacy for City Commissioner Position 3. Visit AikenForChange.com, that's the number four, for more information and to get involved. Yes. Uh, thanks, Giselle, for putting that zombie over Jeff's face. That made me really, really happy. <laughs> well, hey, Schlub42, thank you for voting for me. I really appreciate it. And everybody out in Oregon City, uh, I'm excited to, uh, to be running for office and excited to be talking about it. I guess I can start that off just by kind of saying, like, I'm not your politician guy, right? I mean, I'm all about voting. I'm all about the process. But I'm all about, like, making our communities better, right? Because that's what drummers do. Dave, we make <laughs> that's what drummers better. do. Just everything's better with us. Uh, that's one small little thing on his resume. Uh, Jeff also does a lot of voice acting. Um, he also announces for wrestling. Uh, I mean, you've got a pretty extensive resume, Jeff. Anything else you want to add on there? Let's see. Uh, so pro wrestling. Uh, yes. God, pandemic killed that, right? For so many places. There's some companies starting to stand up again, which is cool. Um, and, and I miss, I really miss working and all that. But I'm a podcast host. Um, I, I work full time. I have, I have a real job. I'm executive manager with the state of Oregon and with a job I've got a lot of passion for helping people out. Drummer, a musician, dad, and like a lot of dads and people working from home these days, also a part time educator because that's like kind of what we do these days, right? But um, 
Is that everything? Is that what I do? I think. Is that everything? I don't know. Should Maybe. we pull up? Uh, well, look at that, Jeff. Pull up some of your com- accomplishments yeah. here. There's a lot. There's a lot to go over. Uh, <laughs> we've got some time on the show, so we'll, we'll definitely be doing a bunch of other stuff. Um, anything new? You know, I think the big thing for me is uh, I've got a podcast out because who doesn't, right? I'm a dude. I have a. I have a I have a computer, and I think like with your package you get with any computer, you get a podcast nowadays, and that's what the world needs. That more. is true. Yeah, but it's the Starfleet Leadership Academy. Um, I huge Star Trek fan. I don't know if you can see the ink, but I've got a whole sleeve um, of Star Trek up on here, and uh, fantastic. And I do leadership consulting. I'm I'm a big believer in people. So I what I do is I watch an episode of Star Trek, and then I dissect it and pull leadership lessons out of it publish every other week and uh, it's just a start it's a star trek podcast told through the lens of leadership development that's so fantastic so we've been doing a a bunch of really fun star trek uh, events here we've got a a group of people a community of people uh they call themselves the star trek happy hour shout out to those guys if anyone's in the chat and they are such a wonderful bunch that's awesome. um, but when picard aired which if you guys haven't checked out Picard on CBS, go check that out. It's phenomenal. Uh, we did viewing parties here, and it was some of the most fun, exciting times. Not necessarily because part, uh, Picard was awesome, uh, but just being in that community of people. Yep. Uh, Trekkies are just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. Um, so, yeah, other people you can trust as well. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, you know, it's cool because I think uh, Trekkies, Trekkers, whatever you want to call us, Star Trek fans, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, because there's, there's so much out right now, right? So Picard, we just finished Lower Decks. We're starting discovery and so you get on twitter and you just hashtag star trek and there's this massive community out there of people and we'll watch the shows together talk about them it's good nerd stuff man. it is good nerd stuff yeah well sweet so that that's what i'm assuming been occupying a little bit of your time apart from running yeah you know i'll tell you campaigning it's a lot of work this is my first time ever running for an office mm-hmm. and uh I mean, they tell you it's a lot of work, but people tell you that about a lot of things, right? You know, but it is a lot of work. And I'll tell you, it, it's, it's hard to, because I think there's people, two types of people get into politics or try to run for office, especially local office. There's people like me that like just want to make a difference and help their community. Mm-hmm. And then there are people who want to stoke their ego and want to add that thing to the resume. And uh, there are people like that. Um, in, in our community and they get pretty nasty and make things really personal when really it should be about our issues. It should be about our skills that we have. But, uh, you know, I mean, that's the price you pay to put yourself out there. You got a yard sign, you got a billboard, you got that cool stuff online you just showed and you're kind of putting yourself out there. And that's just kind of my way of saying, Hey, I'm willing to stick my neck out to help my community. Um, if that means you got to make fun of me, dude, I've worked in pro wrestling for <laughs> God, almost 20 years. I'm used to it. It's uh, it's all good. <laughs> That's a pretty insane concept, you know, caring about people. I don't know, man. Yeah. Let's you know, see, there was, see if it works out for you. There were some great guys. Uh, they, they put together a band. They changed the world. Um, the band was Wild Stallions. It's Bill and Ted. <laughs> what? And, yeah, right. <sighs> but be excellent to each other. Exactly. Be excellent to each yeah, other. That's it. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. That's a wrong <laughs> movie. No, it's the same movie. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Right on. Uh, so typical with most of our shows, uh, if you guys have any questions, the chat is completely open. We want to interact with you guys. So as you guys are joining the chat and you have particular types of questions throughout the entire show, whether it be directed at Jeff or myself or any questions about the bar or any questions about Madhouse Coffee, definitely let us know. Uh, we're going to be starting that mixology segment relatively soon. Um, as I slur my words here, caffeine, I don't, I don't get a lot of caffeine, so... He's had a lot of it. Dude, if you yeah, we had to test all those cocktails. If you guys haven't been to this bar, Vault 31, it is awesome. Like, this is my first time here, and I don't – I'm sorry. I don't think I'm going to leave. This is, uh, this is home for Jeff now. We go. got, our, got our wide cam going, a tiny little shot of the bar, and we've got our bar manager, Caitlin, behind us here. I told David I wasn't going to leave when I came here to fill in for one day a year and a half ago. And now I run the place. Yeah, so she basically lives upstairs. You can't do that herself. because I like my job. No? She did hire herself. <laughs> she did, actually. She Not created bad, a right? job. <laughs> Completely manifested it. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, I think we want to get started on, on cocktail segment already. Let's do it. I, need my, I want my first drink. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the BRB button here real fast. Uh, and we'll be right back with our mixology segment, you awesome. guys. We'll be right back.
Yeah. Oh, that's really upsetting. Okay, I swear I'm gonna figure the sound thing out right. Are you guys away? Because I'm gonna. Yeah, go, go away. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right, so the sound thing, the sound is gonna be the bane of my existence. I'm sorry, guys. It should be unmuted. I'm just checking. We're good. We have audio. Crap. Sorry. I'm screwing that up every single time. Uh, I ruined my shameless plug of vault31store.com, which is where I got this really rad hat and this really rad sweatshirt. Uh, welcome to the mixology segment. Uh, we are going to do, I don't know, what about, I'm going to stick this right here. So Madhouse Coffee is our sponsor for this episode. So we've got a bunch of stuff from them. Thank you guys so much for sending over a bunch of really rad coffee. Uh, we've got a couple of cocktails in the works that we're going to be working on. So let's get these guys around. Someone's leaving rags everywhere. So we can see Paul's pretty face. All right, so you know what? Let's just freaking get right into it. So the first one is kind of a take on, I really hate saying the word espresso martini, um, but it's kind of the cocktail that started everything. So the uh, pharmaceutical stimulant, uh, one of the probably first, I would say grand coffee cocktails that came out in, oh, like the 80s or something along those lines. I don't know the entire history about it. Um, all I know is a famous celebrity at the time, let me change the angle here, famous celebrity at the time, Walked into a bar, said, I want a drink that's going to wake me up and then fuck me up. Excuse me for the language, but that's basically how this thing came about. So we are going to be making that. Uh, this is a shaken drink. We're going to start with ice and we are going to go straight for vodka. I'm going to go with a local Portland potato vodka for this. So we're going to go 50 mils into that. We need our Kahlua. We got ah, Kahlua, only 20 mils of that. We're gonna be using a lot of this. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in the well. And we need a shot of espresso. So I just ground up some whole bean coffee from Madhouse. Putting about 20 grams or so in there. Gonna tamp it down. And we're gonna get our espresso going. Realizing I just didn't test this drink with the actual martini glass, which barely fits into our little espresso machine. So while that's coming out, uh, what else are we gonna do? We need our simple. In a gallery. Put that there, we're gonna need that in a second. A little bit of simple. Some people call you Jiminy Cricket, other people call you a genius. Either way, hopefully, he's listening. <laughs> genius. All right. We have our espresso. Now, the great thing about using a fresh shot of espresso is you get that crema, which is gonna pop up. It's gonna look real, real nice. And shake. Get that shaky ASMR in front of the mic here. Yes. We ASMR are gonna. Is where... it's where it's... Yeah. Yep. All right. We are going to double strain this. Get that at a shot here. If you're not familiar with double straining, it's literally just double straining. Sounds like where you strain it once and then again, same you strain time. It through a strainer. Yeah, strain the strain through a strainer. And if you want to get real weird, you strain the strainer through the strainer. That's enough out of you. That yeah, crossed, I'm done. That, that crossed the line. <laughs> <laughs> Someone tell Tom Cruise, he's going to be real set. I'm not here. No one can see me. No one knows who I am. Because <laughs> you don't have the world's most recognizable voice. All right. I, for the record, hate my stupid boys. Should we just end the show on that? Just, that's it. That's, that's it. it. We're done. That's the go home. We can all go home now. 
Alrighty, so that drink's gonna settle. We're gonna garnish that just with a couple of coffee beans on top. Alright, that's good. Woo, fancy. I know, the last mixology segment, the last show, I didn't garnish a single one of them. So, hopefully we'll fix that with this show. We're gonna garnish all the drinks. Every guys. single one. Here's your water, garnish of something. We got some Tom Cruise comments. Let's see. <laughs> oh, I don't know if we ever answered that question from uh, Giselle. Oh yeah, if the uh, where do cows like to go on the weekend? The movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now uh, we can go home. All right. <laughs> I'll tell you what's exciting about this drink right away though is Madhouse Coffee. They they roast their own beans. Yeah, so like this is going to be a unique, a unique version of this. All right, so I'm going to divvy this up here. Are right, we doing this again? Don't you want to try this? I, I do, but there's got to be an easier way. Um, the easy way is spilling it everywhere like I'm doing because you can't pour out of a martini glass correctly. Uh, don't drink the coffee beans. Don't tell me how to live my life. Yeah. Drink the garnish. You, you can drink the garnish. That's right. Why do you get the big one? Now we one? disperse. I can disperse this way. <laughs> I'm going to stay off screen. I like being disembodied. Oh, I love that. It's nice because it's really, uh, the word that comes to mind is clear, which is kind of weird. It's I, got a really nice sweetness to it. I agree wholeheartedly. And for some, an espresso martini, so when you look at those two words, you think something that's very flavor forward and something mm. that's very flavor forward. And with this, you don't get that hit of vodka that you would with a, or associate with a martini or that hit of coffee that you would associate with espresso. They just marry really Yeah, it's there, but it doesn't punch you in the face. Yeah. Exactly. It rolls on the back end. You almost feel it on your tongue more than you taste it. Exactly. Yeah. So, that's real nice. I'm drinking yours now, too. You can drink mine. So, yeah, that's the pharmaceutical stimulant. Um, I couldn't find a whole lot of history in that cocktail, at least ones that made sense. Like I said, discovered roughly in the 80s. With that Super popular story. in Australia. Is it? Not so popular here. Yeah. Fun fact. I feel like we should be starting our morning with these. Like, this is the best start of the day. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we're going to be moving on to our second one here. So uh, the second cocktail is a built cocktail. So we're going to build it in the glass. Uh, we're going to go Collins mode. And let's see. I wrote my little cheat sheet here. So <laughs> let's change our camera. And I just want to make sure I do this right. So I'm going to ice it. These, this is one I have been playing with for about a day, not a whole lot. So we're going to do roughly 90 mils of soda water. I'm just going to eyeball that. Um, we are going to go with a, uh, actually I might mix it up a bit. Also, we miss you too, Trey. I realized that none of us actually responded to that. That is an awesome bottle. It is an awesome bottle for an interesting orange liqueur. For my... Trek nerds out there, it's a nice bottle. It's a Canar style bottle. Canar? <laughs> Canar is a Cardassian drink. It's uh, black no. though and very molasses -y. It's not at all like this. I mean, we can save the bottle for you. It's a great bottle. And then you can repurpose it. <laughs> we could try to dye it black. We could also do that. Two. Twin. <laughs> all right. So again, we need another shot of espresso. Got some grounds that I did earlier. Again, thank you, Madhouse. Well, I'm gonna credit some of that great, the, uh, the pharmaceutical we just did with the rose from Madhouse. Just, I mean, that was so subtle, but it had a great finish on it. Really good coffee. It really did. Boom. And, you know, as a coffee fan and as a vodka fan, it, uh, that's not what I was expecting from that drink. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised because right. it got my shot pulling. It was so smooth. Yeah, I don't know that you would get that with a different rose. I it can also yeah definitely um, depending on the type of espresso rose. Espresso rose are typically a little bit darker. Um, roast is a little bit longer to bring out more flavor. Uh, so depending on how they roast it and what combination of flavors they use in the roasting process, it can change everything so significantly. Long story short, they did a real good job, and we're coffee snobs because this is the Pacific Northwest. We are coffee snobs. I can't say I am. I'm more of a tea guy myself, just saying. Well, that's because you uh, don't get along with coffee. Uh, Madhouse has some wonderful tea drinks as well. All right. Coffee's really just tea done right. Ah! Uh... 
pun master to your resume. <laughs> All right. So I realize I pulled the shot into a cup, which I did not want to do because it is so hard to slow pull. Slow, slow pull. Slow, slow pourer. Yeah, got it. We got there, guys. We got there. Some yeah, oh, I, sh I really should have. Um, you know what? I'm, we're just gonna we're just gonna yellow it, y'all. Let's you see if I can. We have a spoon that's bent to work. Nope, we're doing it this way. I'm I'm committed now to make to see if this works. It's probably not. It's gonna make. This you know what? I don't let him do things. <laughs> Uh, Sunday nights are his special night. Yeah, you know what? We're just we're just gonna go, go for it. Going we're just gonna go for it. I'm helping. So far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> Crap. I've never been so here. <laughs> oh, we got a bit of a leak. We're fine. Everything's fine. Okay, it's blend. It's sinking a little bit more than I thought because I'm pouring a little heavier. Like throw up. All right, so we got some good separation there. So if you guys want to build this at home, don't do this. <laughs> It'd be easier if you actually pulled a shot in a correct shot glass. It'd be so much easier to pour than this mug. But I measured that beautifully because we need about that much room on the top for our quick little sweet cream we're going to make. Or come to Vault 31, order one, and then you can watch David doing this all over again. Yeah, because I'm not making it. <laughs> worth the price just to watch him make it up one. Alright. <laughs> I feel like Oops. this tension that you could feel basically radiating off of him was really worth it because I thrive on other people's pain. <laughs> remember what I said earlier about, hey, I've totally got everything prepared. I'm not going to have to go back six times. Remember, remember that? Remember how I told you to prepare everything before and you were like, no, I'm fine. Remember that, remember that time? I feel like prepared is a relative truth. Oh. Like he's not going to the store. Right? <laughs> so all, all I'm doing here, y'all, heavy cream, sugar, going to make a sweet cream foam by just shaking the living snot. We'll go to the bar cam one here. Living snot out of out of everything in a Boston shaker here. Look at those forearms. He's not messing around. This is the only exercise I get for quarantine. <laughs> All right, so that doesn't take much time. And now we're just going to slow float that right on the top. Check that out. Ow! Yeah, so we got three really, really awesome layers there. So basically our soda water and uh, vodka mix with a sweet cream top, swan it sandwich with uh, some Madhouse Coffee Espresso there. Uh, let's divvy this out. Get this on. All right. I still don't know how to pour these right. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be, oh, this is not gonna be mixed, I just realized. No. There we go. <laughs> You know what? Here. You get some cream. <laughs> yeah, you get cream. You get coffee. We're, uh, let's, let's reverse. All right, let's try this again. That actually kind of would have been funny. I don't know. It just tastes like coffee. <laughs> Mine's just soda water. Yeah? Thank you, sir. All right, disperse. I already love the smell of this. Mm -hmm. I love it. I should have not put that much soda water in there. It's a little weird and fizzy. Yeah, I get the soda water first before I get anything else. That also is probably, forward. again, very poorly mixed. It's, it reminds me of like a coffee cremoso. Yeah, it, or right. Italian soda with right, cream. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what yeah, else. Right, you're right, cremoso. It's got that can... hint of coffee in the middle, but it's mm. mostly Italian. Well, I was going to say, it reminds me of like a coffee-scented LaCroix. Hmm. I just realized this is why coffee is not carbonated. It's not great. <laughs> no. You, know, in, you uh, tried, and that's what's important. South America it's close. They carbonate coffee. It's close. I think, yeah. Yeah. I think I eyeballed that soda water a little too heavy. Carbonated coffee can be a thing, and it can work out. Um, like I said, the flavor is there. It's just 
weird. Yeah, so that, that's one I've been toying with. Like I said, it's only been about right. a day or so since I've been messing with that it's, one. It's just the scent of coffee. Essence. <laughs> coffee, right? Coffee LaCroix. It is delicious. Neither way. <laughs> it originated at 1231. <laughs> Fresh. Fresh. All right, what are we moving into now? Let's see. Um, let's, um, should we get weird? Yeah, now let's get weird. Now's the time. Should we get weird or should we get weird later? That wasn't, we were not let's, uh, let's go on a scale of weirdness. So we'll start with the one that's not so weird and then we'll get way weird. Caitlin's running away. Um, so yeah, I think... I think I'm gonna make one specifically for Madhouse that I've been trying to tinker with. So, okay. Are you gonna do what I think you're gonna do? Prob I don't know. <laughs> I'm worried now. We talked about a lot of shit last night. Uh, no, no, that one, that one will happen later, but not at the moment. So, right. Um, how are we going to start this one? We are going to shake this one. Are you a coffee man, Mr. Jeff? I am. But you know, I'm not one of those snobs. I was, <laughs> a, I was in the Navy, and in the Navy, we would brew coffee, and then we'd put in fresh grounds and brew that coffee with the coffee we brewed. Uh -huh. um, so I, I'm really not too picky about what I drink. That's fair. Um, I... Did not know you were in the Navy. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. It uh, was an experience. I was on a submarine, and uh, that's a more of an experience. I was much younger and uh, much more, uh, say, my life was <laughs> much more flexible. A little different. <laughs> All right, we're going to build this one in a shaker tin. We actually have a lot of uh, Navy regulars that are pretty rad. Yeah. So using a Kraken Dark Roast, if you guys aren't familiar with the product, it's pretty rad. Um, Madhouse has a really, really cool color scheme. It's kind of this blue, purple, Alice in Wonderland theme thing going. So I wanted to make a really nice um, kind of dairy coffee purple drink. Um, this doesn't look like it's purple. You can't, oh, this bottle's almost empty. Um, this stuff's a weird color. It's kind of hard to tell in the bottle. It looks like normal Kraken, just kind of like a black spiced rum. Um, it's very far from it. It's also not the color you think it is. It's weird. Uh, eggnog, please. Cool. So we got our rum in there. Uh, we're going to add Le Nog. I didn't realize I was Vanna White. And you're not a phantom voice anymore. I know. I, I love like that wall. I like being off camera. All right. Pouring some Nog in. Everybody loves Nog. All right. We're doing about two and a half ounces of that. Noggy. And we're gonna go over to my good friend here, Frangelica. About 20 mils of that. Uh, what else did I write down here? All right. Oh, that's right, we need a pull. I really should be better about getting these shots pulled first. Back when I was working a lot of pro wrestling, we would go down to Vegas and do shows in casinos down there. Down in Vegas, coffee's not a big priority, right? So you're in a casino, you got a Starbucks, maybe, but you got a Dunkin' Donuts, maybe a McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So not a lot of choices. So we would, uh, the various places we'd go, and figure out per dollar what was your best cup of coffee you could get in there in the casino. And I think it says everything about your coffee choices when the clear winner was McDonald's. Wow, yeah. yeah. Gets the job done, I suppose. That's a really cool thing I actually love about Madhouse is usually when I go out for coffee, I'm not typically one of those that I'll stop at a drive through and be satisfied. If I, uh, going to a coffee house is kind of, um, um, it's therapeutic. <laughs> it's an experience. And I think yeah. with Madhouse, especially from what I've seen, like, the entire when you walk in, the whole thing's an experience. Everything. I forgot to put a thing under the espresso machine, so that's, that's what's happening right now. <laughs> Everything's fine. It only almost exploded. Why do we do this live again? It was good. It was good idea. <laughs> <laughs> really good question. Let's try it again. Good question. This is a terrible idea. Oh, well, you know, episode three. Things are going to happen, right? Um, no, but as I was saying, um, it, it's a fun experience going to an actual coffee house versus just going through a drive through getting what you need and leaving. Um, it's a really, really awesome atmosphere in there. Uh, and just go in there, sit down, and get some work done. Yeah, I think right now when you're 
options to go into a place are limited. Right. Like, what a cool space they have there, right? Yeah. It's got, it's, it's conducive for working or studying, but it's just got a really cool ambiance to it also. It's super, super, super neat. They got a really cool thing going on. And again, if you guys aren't familiar with Madhouse Coffee here in Vancouver, Washington, uh, go give them a follow. Check them out on Facebook. Go swing by that coffee house. It's rad. So that shot is being pulled. And they're just down the street from here. So they they're not far. They're hot to get a jump. I know. I could throw a rock at them. I shouldn't throw a rock. I shouldn't throw a rock at them. <laughs> All right. So that shot's being pulled. Why? <laughs> because I wanted to try cocktail caviar. I've never had it, ah. and they are wonderfully delicious. Alrighty. Because why not? So, in case everybody forgot what the hell we were making here, <laughs> we've got our crack and dark roast. We got some frangelica in there. I just poured a shot of espresso, about thirty mils worth. Um, we got some nog, and we're gonna go ahead and shake this up. Now I know there may be some bartenders in the chat, and people have yelled at me all the time about this about shaking dairy. I don't want to hear it. It works just fine. Yeah, you gotta clean up a little bit, but so what? All right, so that's almost kind of the color I want. I'm gonna top it off a little bit more because we always need a little bit more. Plus that bottle is almost gone anyway. All righty. Coming out that crack, it almost looks like dark purple, but almost blue. It's kind of purpley, yeah. The, yeah. the Unfortunately, the drink itself is gonna be kind of grayish. Grayish purple. So I want to make sure this gets all mixed in again. Froth up that nog. And we are going to strain this. This would be a single strain? This is a single strain. We're just trying to... I learned, right? <laughs> Double straining is doing it twice. Yeah. It is quite great. We're just trying to get the ice out, which is why we're straining it. The grayish with a little bit of purple, it's kind of a nice little color. All right. And I'm going to cheat. Cheat's not the word. Uh, I'm going to use actually a really, really cool product in case y'all don't know about this. But Ready Whip makes an actual like coffee foam that's really, really rad. Instead of making ours, we're just going to do a float in the center there. And now it looks like whipped cream coming out, but once that settles, it's going to look like the actual like head of a beer or head of, a, head of an espresso there. And there we have it. I don't have a name for any of these yet, so. I would love to hear what people would like to name. I was gonna say, right if now. our chat wants to name this sucker, wasted espresso. I'm seeing that pop out. Oh no, that's when I uh, when I screwed up the, the shot there. <laughs> uh, hey, we got some people using our uh, our emotes there. That's awesome. We're official. We're guys. official. Oh yeah! By the way, guys, we are Twitch affiliated now. That's another one of our big announcements. Yeah, I keep forgetting to say that we are stay officially tuned for affiliated. More fun emotes. I know. Stay I'm tuned for all kinds of fun space. stuff. All right, let's divvy this out. That foam's kind of leveled out, which is really, really nice. You can't pour out of a coop glass. Yeah, that was your dumbest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can, right? Uh, Just do it off camera so nobody sees you. I'm gonna do it over the do dump sink. The sink. Yeah. Oh, everything's horrible. <laughs> it's going so well. Oh my god! You can oh, believe yeah. how well it's going to work. We're going to have to do a lot of cleaning tonight. And by we, pretty much me. And of course, it's all dairy. I hate you so much right now. Why do I let you into my well? Do you want one or are you going to drink out of that? I'm going to drink out of this. I'm not going to okay. do that again. <laughs> Alright, this turned into a Gallagher show real fast. I got some off-camera paper towels. Guys, don't. <laughs> <Get a shot. laughs> this is why Kate doesn't let David out here very Does often. No, just Every everything's sticky. <laughs> everything's sticky. So, a little sweet on the drink. But I really like that. It's really good. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, it is a little bit sweet. It makes me almost not hate eggnog. Oh, yeah. Eggnog's so good. I hate eggnog. What? Mm. So good. Eggnog and cocktails? Amazing. Mm. 
amazing. And it's almost like, you know, you get some of those eggnog lattes at those drive through places, and they literally just taste like your stomach is going to rip into three pieces. That sounds right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst. But this is, it's so, again, again, it's subtle, and it comes in, but it takes that eggnog flavor that coats your whole mouth, and yeah. right down the middle, you get that crack, and it comes down your mouth, and it gives you that flavor explosion. Yes. But when I say explosion, I don't mean like, oh, flavor. I mean like, ooh, that's nice. Yeah, that crack in dark roast is really good. It's working out to uh, zombie blood. I'm seeing some other names there, purple and gray zombie. These are all good names, y'all. We're all coffee down here. My, my font's really small on my laptop, which is why I'm like ducking like this. <laughs> um, cool, two more. These ones should go pretty quick. Um, yeah, let's just get right on. We're getting the weird territory now. It hasn't been weird already. If it hasn't been weird already, it's about to get weird. <laughs> this is where it starts. Yep. We're going to do a coffee pour over Manhattan. Wow. Uh, yeah. So let's start with um, our whiskey. I. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with a rye from Redwood Empire. Sixty mil of that. Vermouth. Vermouth. We don't do too many martinis or uh, Manhattans, so our vermouth is kind of hidden. You're going to do about a quarter ounce of that. Manhattan's a good drink, but it's also one of those drinks where you're like, is it 1946 and you're ordering something? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we've got a really nice, let's see if I can find it here. Of course, I don't have this ready. Um, we've got a really nice coffee bitter, and I think we're going to pop in there. Slow, no. Swear it's in here. I don't know if you there guys can see it on the camera or not, but it's, I'm excited just by how many bitters options you have. <laughs> we, we do have a ton of bitters. Kind of going back to the couple other episodes that we've done. Um, just a couple dashes of coffee bitters. And that completes our Manhattan. I don't know what the peanut gallery back here is doing. Yeah, you should just keep an eye on something. Yeah, so we're gonna dump we're gonna dump our grounds right into our pour over. And we are just gonna dump our Manhattan right into it. Kinda slow because we want those grounds to bloom up nice. So we are literally coffee filtering our Manhattan. Begin with Madhouse Coffee Co. Coffee. This is a lot better than a really poor decision I made back when I was in the Navy. And we tried to make coffee with beer instead of water. Um, <laughs> yeah, it didn't go well. That machine, uh, that machine ended up getting uh, getting deep six. But, oh, gosh. Uh, had interesting place. It doesn't mean we didn't drink it. I mean, we weren't, you know, we're not wasteful. But, uh, yeah, you got it. All right, so that's going to take a couple seconds here to filter through. How's our chat doing? Got kicked out. What did you name the eggnog one? We actually didn't name it yet. There's a bunch of good names in chat. I'll have to go through and figure out what we're going to name it. So yeah, while that's filtering through, uh, how's everyone's evening going? Super glad so many people are on here. This is great. Yeah, we got quite a few hopping on. All right, impatient. Let's. Normally, I learned my lesson the last drink. Normally, this would go in a coupe glass. I'm not going to pour it out of a coupe glass. I think I'm just going to pour it directly out of this thing. That's kind of what it's for. You're so smart. You'll just have to imagine we're using the coupe glass. All right. Here we go with our, we have to pour this thing out of because it's actually a small amount, but we'll, we'll get there. 
So this is our pour over Manhattan. The pour over Rye Manhattan. Yeah, that alone is going to give it a little bit of a different dimension. Whiskey fans, whiskey. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Not a whole lot because we don't want to keep mixing brown and clear liquors. Running away. The smell is interesting. Mmm, that is so good. I love this drink. I don't hate it. Uh, well, I'm a big Manhattan fan, whiskey fan. It's anyway. a coffee yeah. Manhattan. Um, the coffee's there. It's there. It's yeah. There. It's nice. Again, kind of similar to that first drink. It doesn't punch you in the face. It's it's just there to kind of say hello, and it's lovely. It's right. delicious. Yeah. But I think for me, the rye kind of overpowers the the coffee. I did go with a very spicy rye. Yeah. It's I good. Did. Really good. Like, and I I don't know if the coffee is coming through from the pour over as much as it is from the bitters. Oh yeah. There's only about two dashes in there. Yeah, but it's that back end kind of mm -hmm. flavor that you normally would get from bitters. And yeah. But it could be, it could be both. We're getting injection. I don't know. Well, I think what we've seen with this coffee is it is kind of subtle. It kind of wraps yeah. the tongue instead of instead of punching you in there. So maybe it kind of complements the bitters. All right. For the last one, for my last trick. Oh, this is the one you need the plastic sheet. I should bring this out too. Uh, we are gonna light stuff on fire. Well, everybody, it's been great. Uh, meeting you. <laughs> really nice having you. Tell my wife and kids I love them. We are going to go coop. It's kind of the whole point. So how we're going to start this one. Put some ice in our coop glass. We want this chilled. So I'm just going to fill that little bit of soda water and kind of let that chill down. I meant to put one in the cooler, but I forgot. I'm probably wondering what this big jar I just pulled out is. This is cold brew from Madhouse Coffee. They made me some this morning, and I've kind of transferred it to this big old mason growler. Uh, we're going to be using some of that. All right, now we got our coupe glass nice and chilled. We're going to dump it. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, you should worry. All right. Sure. <laughs> Don't need to worry. So, fire. You're going to toast the end of this cinnamon stick here. Probably shouldn't be pointing that right at my computer, but too late. Here we are. Put on the edge, David. Don't let fear stop you. You're stronger than that. Yeah. All right. So now we got our smoldering cinnamon stick. You're going to cover that with our coupe glass, and that coupe glass is going to absorb that cinnamon smoke while we make the rest of the cocktail, which is shaken. All right, we are going to go with another whiskey. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna go with something not quite as spicy as that uh, Redwood with some nice, as I throw everything around, some Knob Creek here. Can't go wrong there. I'm already fascinated with this smoking cinnamon stick on the glass. That's uh, new for me. I was maple syrup. In the kitchen? Did I pull it out already? Do we have any? You better. <laughs> Might get to watch us make maple syrup. All right, I'm gonna run away for two seconds. Good dance, Chrissy. No, I will show off my lovely sweater that you can get one of on vault31store.com. Yeah. Vault31store.com. Vault31store.com. Also, women's tank tops. Thanks for the announcer voice. You're welcome. All right, I'm back. You're the only thing I bring to the table. <laughs> I had a little thing of maple syrup set aside. I don't know where that went, so I had to grab a new one. I'm going to put just a tiny little bit, about 10 mils of maple syrup in there. A little bit of Angostura bitters. Uh, we're kind of making an old-fashioned. But we're doing a cold brew old-fashioned. So here is where our cold brew coffee comes into play. Hey, 
you know what? Yeah, you just, yeah it's cold brew, man. You just cold go. brew. I'm going to go with it. Go nuts. All right. Shaking with ice. Another shaky ASMR for y'all. Alright. We're gonna take our coop, stand it upright. Grab our strainer. We're going to just single strain. Thanks for the clarification, that was for me. All about double straining, Doc. That's literally gonna be my thing. Double yeah, straining double everything. Straining naked. That's, All right. a, that's a good name. I, I like it. It's got legs. And we're gonna take that cinnamon stick and just drop it right uh, to the top. And there we are. So this is kind of a modification of Churchill's Breakfast or Churchill's Cigar, um, which is basically a maple Manhattan or a maple old fashioned, really. Um, but we added some of that cold brew in there. And so it's nice because it's kind of developing like a faux crema on top. But don't be fooled. That's just uh, kind of everything being shaken. So now that I haven't learned my lesson again, we're going to pour this out of a coupe glass. They say second time is the charm. Yeah. But so actually, have I learned? Have I learned anything? Uh, oh, you're gonna do it. <laughs> there it is. We're not pouring, we're splashing. We're splashing. All right, we did it. <laughs> if you guys could just see my disappointed mom face right now. All right. <laughs> I can feel it. Sorry, bar mom. All right. Ooh, it smells awesome. Yes. That smells really good. It's so mellow. I love this. This is also just one of my favorite cocktails in general at Churchill's Breakfast. Um, adding cold brew to it like this is just just wonderful. That cold brew comes through really nice. Yeah. Mm, it's got an awesome flavor. We're drink this whole thing right now. Mm -hmm. All right. So now that I've made a total mess, uh, we're going to go ahead and hit that little be right back button. I'm going to clean up a bit. Caitlin's going to come on. Let me change our camera here. Caitlin's going to come on. Um, and do some really rad cocktails. So let me adjust my hat that I got from vault31store.com and we'll be back here in a second.
back. Oh, excuse me, I left my hat I bought at Vault31Store.com. That's a great hat. Next time you leave your hat, I'm going to take it. All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, one one product um, I was going to use. So I've been, we've been trying to do a couple different science experiments, and one I wasn't going to use but turned out not to because I realized how silly this is, is, a, is making clear coffee. Now, it's not exactly clear, um, but essentially it's it's got the same caffeine as normal coffee, but kind of without the taste. It's kind of like LaCroix coffee, but I made it out of the Madhouse coffee beans. But I kind of realized at this point it's just caffeinated water, and so I just decided not to really use it, but it is kind of still cool nonetheless. Um, we may end up doing something fun with it, but I couldn't figure out anything at this time, but I thought it would be kind of cool to show that off real fast. Uh, without further ado, now we've got Caitlin, our bar manager. Caitlin, wave. Woo! It's me! Alright, and she's got a couple different awesome ones she's going to make with some Madhouse coffee, and uh, go, I guess. Take it away. <laughs> Alright. Um, <laughs> So, we are going to kind of deviate from some of the cocktails that David did and go in a different direction, obviously, because they're not his, they're mine. Um, so, the first cocktail... Well, I'll eat yeah, shut the fuck up. Um, the first one we're going to do is actually going to be a hot beverage, because I don't think you did any hot beverages. No, 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 no. They started hot. <laughs> um, so, we're going to do kind of a take on a really classic Irish coffee. So, Irish coffee, in general, is literally just Jameson coffee, whipped cream, garnish with a little bit of cinnamon and you're done. We're going to have a little bit of fun with it. We're going to go a little bit different. So let me grab a glass really quick. You went out of the hot drinks, David, but they look good. That's right. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So we're going to take our Jameson. Do an ounce and a half of that. And then we are going to do just a tiny splash, about a half ounce of chocolate liqueur. And about a half ounce of triple sec, and then we're gonna top it off with coffee. All right, so we've got our nice hot beverage here, and now here's the fun part. We are gonna revisit David and his crazy shaken cream concept. It works. It would work so much better if I had one of those little shaker balls for protein shakes. But I digress. We're going to do it a little bit different than he did, though. So we're going to add a yeah, quarter cup of heavy cream into our shaker. And then about a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And then we're going to actually take some, this uh, Fort George Cavatica Stout. It's an awesome stout. Fort George is a local brewery, and that can did not open. So that's super rad. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so when we were under a little ad break just a second ago, we have to call this out. Caitlin dropped an entire can of stuff. And I'm going to punch. Just caveman opened it. Caitlin 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 opened it. It was, okay, tell that to the gonna 16 ounces. Now it's going to be all over your face. It's going to be all sticky. <laughs> Put the pop later. This is why we can't have nice things. So I'm just going to stand here and uh, shake this for a while. Shake, shake, shake. Oh, hey, we have a drummer in house. We do have a drummer in house. We got the beat. Again, we have and then our we're gonna... lovely guest, Jeff Eakin, here visiting today. I'm excited to uh, All have right. drinks. That's probably good enough. That looks good. That looks nice and silky smooth. Probably good enough. And so we are going to top this off with our vanilla stout cream. And we can think of this kind of as like the cold foam that they use at Starbucks or Dutch Brothers. <laughs> and But better because yes, it's it. boozy. But better because <laughs> it's boozy. So there's that. And now the horrible thing about hot drinks is that sharing it is a pain in the stick. <laughs> so um, one of you lovely gentlemen can volunteer as tribute because I'm going to make another hot drink after this. Oh, well, look at that. Uh, not it. You're our guest, Jeff, so. <laughs> right. So you have to try it. That's a lot to drink. Very well Where's my <laughs> Well, that cream 
with something else. I would drink just that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. My God. That's really good. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. Bubble cam. I think what's great here, right? Is I've got my face mask hanging off. Incredible coffee down here, but this cream, this vanilla, the stout cream, was it Quebec the stout? Oh. That's to die for. Well so, done. Hooray! That's one that we can actually make in-house after all of this is over because we'll actually have all the things and the espresso machine will probably be going home with David after tonight. Hopefully. Uh <laughs> So let's go ahead and change directions, do a cold drink this time. Can we also point out how insanely faster you made one drink versus how long it took me to do one? Yeah, that's why I get paid the big bucks and you don't. That's why, yeah. <laughs> All right, so this one we're going to build again, just like we did with our last one. Kind of. Kind of. We're going to do part of it in the shaker, and then we're going to go ahead and... Oh, shout out to these lazy boys. They're in the chat. What's going on, y'all? We're going to put it in the shaker, and then we're going to top it. So, this is, we're getting on to the cold time of year when it is all about peppermint mocha season. Who doesn't love peppermint mocha for the holidays? And if you did not know... You said peppermint mocha, and we dropped 10 viewers. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> it's no accounting for taste, right? For those of you that didn't know, Kahlua makes an awesome peppermint mocha version of their coffee liqueur for the holidays. So we're going to do an ounce and a half of that. And then we're going to do, again, a half ounce of the Godiva chocolate liqueur. And I forgot that I was gonna go ahead and make this all pretty and snazzy. So we're gonna take our cocoa sauce here. It's a real chocolate theme for these drinks. I feel like I'm okay with this. <laughs> it works really well with delicious Madhouse coffee. It's true. So we're gonna put some chocolate in our glass there, pop that on our shaker. Get this part shaken up, and we're gonna go ahead and just strain this directly into the glass. which we are then going to go ahead and put the ice back in here. <laughs> Thank you, Chrissy. My own personal Vanna. And we're going to top that off with the Madhouse cold brew that we have. Uh, that looks so cool going in. Dude, that looks like the cold brew is just like almost bleeding its way down through because of the coke. With the it's got actually like nitro there. effect. Yeah. yeah. All right, and we're going to top this off with a little dollop of whipped cream and some peppermint sprinkles. Sprinkles make everything better. We got there. Apparently, it's too early for candy canes, but uh, says, who? <laughs> I will says all the grocery stores I went to today. I went to three grocery stores looking for candy canes, but all I found were peppermint sprinkles. So I mean, candy canes never expire. I've got boxes of them. I'm sure somewhere, like everybody does. So this is how the drink would look being served, but we also want to be able to drink it and share it amongst everybody. So we're going to go ahead, take a straw, mix that up real quick. I'm bummed you're not going to have to know the pain of pouring out of a poop glass like I did. I already know Three the pain times. of... Three times! See, I know the concept of the pain of pouring out of a poop glass. Um, uh, no. We had some vicarious pain. <laughs> I, knew, I knew going into it. All right. Excited for this one. All right. So I'm going to pour this over the sink. It does look a little funky. There's like whipped cream pieces floating around in it. It's chunks of uh, chunks of flavor. Uh, you get all the whipped cream at the bottom. Yes. Yeah. And then Chrissy, that one's for you. Yeah. Just giving that a Bring smell. Bring out a big one. Oh, more it smells like the holidays. Disperse and. I'm gonna drink off camera because that was weird last time. It tastes like Christmas. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I can drink that every day. I can taste a lot of the cold, more of the cold brew in this one than the one that David did with the cold brew. And, oh, yeah, it comes out way nice. Yeah, and just that like underpinning of peppermint. On. Yeah, it's not overwhelming. I am never going to be able to go to sleep tonight. <laughs> What's really great about it is mostly with typical cold, cold brews that you get at some other coffee houses is you get a huge bitter note, not existent here. Yeah. So smooth. All right, so we're gonna do another cold beverage because apparently that's the theme of the night. I'm still killing this hot beverage. It's oh, so good. I'm gonna throw a mobile cam. Yeah. We're gonna move my peppermint sprinkles. This time, we're just gonna go ahead, throw the ice in there. Actually, we're not, because I forgot. I'm gonna go chocolate again. Just kidding. Coffee drinks are so much fun to do. They're so versatile. But at the same time, there's only like six flavors that you can pair with it that actually pair nicely. One of them is chocolate. And one of them is chocolate. Ooh. Chocolate is so perfect. And like they complement each other so well. The coffee notes bring out more of the chocolate. The chocolate brings out more of the coffee. It just, it just works. Uh, so for this one, it's going to be super simple. Um... When I was in Montana, I picked up this uh, cream bourbon uh, from a distillery called Headframe. Headframe is a really cool independent distillery out of um, Butte, Montana. And Orphan Girl is so good. So we're going to do an ounce and a half of that. Super easy. Right in there. And then we're going to revisit our Cavatica Stout. We're going to do about half fill of Cavatica. And then we're going to finish it off with some of the Madhouse Cold Brew. And then over the top. More of that Godiva! Keep that chocolate. Because, you know, Godiva. And then we're just going to go ahead, another dollop of whipped cream. This one, we're going to take our house-made cocoa sauce, put it right over the top, and there you have it. It's going to be like a delightful iced white mocha, or iced mocha, not white mocha. So that house-made chocolate sauce uh, is a Ghirardelli kind of concoction that I made earlier, but I call it Coco Carl's Cocoa Sauce. Not necessarily trademark, but if I say that, does anybody get that reference? Am I the only one that actually gets that reference? I think like the phone sticks, you are the only one that understands that. There was finally one person that actually got it, and I gave him a free phone stick. <laughs> does anyone understand Coco Carl? Coco Carl. No? Jeff? Yeah. Oh, going Cowboy Carl, Carl, but that's not where you're going. No, and it was a special the other day, and it was written Coco Carl, and Nobody everybody who ordered it asked me, like, what is, what is it? I, I'm a huge Elton Brown fan, huge. Uh, in one of his great shows, uh, Good Eats, Coco Carl was um, one of the characters that was on that show that had like a chocolate company. It's kind of like the fake the chocolate company of the show. Uh, so Coco Carl made everything from like Coco Carl snacks to Coco Carl this. But that was the whole joke of the sauce. Now we're going to try this awesome cocktail. Wow. Ooh, that's a smell. There's a lot happening with this one. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I gotta like roll that around to get everything. That orphan girl is so good. Yep. And the, it's like the, the chocolate, the cocoa almost coats everything a little bit, so it takes a second for everything else yeah. to roll through. And again, at the, at the end, that cold brew just kind of pops. I mean, just ever so little bit. And the Cavatica really just complements the cold brew, cold especially. Brew. Yep. Those two work really well together. I like I like this one as a sipper. Yeah, it would almost make a yeah. good martini. Yeah, that's a good sipping drink. You know the the cold, the way the cold brew and the stout work together reminds me. I don't know if you know, but coffee up until like the 16th century was considered the devil's drink, and like you couldn't drink it in Europe, you know, in, in the West. And I think it was Pope Clement the Eighth, um, seventh or eighth, in the late 1500s, actually baptized coffee beans so that we could drink it because he was such a fan. Oh man, hail Satan though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's our mixology segment. Thank you, Kate. Uh, Cheers. 
I'm oh. done, I guess. Oh, you got more? Add oh, more! Oh, you got more? Go, go. No, it's fine. It's you fine. three earlier, and I, I suck. Continue. <sighs> Shame. <laughs> Shame. Uh, thank you, good night, house. We're going hot again. We're going hot, right? We're going hot. All right, so once again, folks, it's cold. It's nasty, but it's the holidays. And what says the holidays more than something I can't open? Like My hands aren't wet. Gifts, and neither are mine. So cute. <laughs> Better than hot buttered rum. Yeah, hot buttered rum. So we're going to go there. We're going to do a nice, probably quarter teaspoon in there. Not tablespoon, rather. Words are hard. Drop that back into my well. I'm going to complain about standard measuring tape because you keep saying that. <laughs> I'm going to beat you metric. when we're off camera. I'm going to teach you the metric system. I know the metric system. <laughs> He's been trying to teach me for over two years. It's not that hard. It just doesn't make sense. The metric system? It's all crazy. Like It, all, it, all, it like, doesn't make crazy. sense because we were raised on stupid. We were raised smarter. We were raised in a system where... <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> we anyway. We silly math like that. So, we got hot buttered rum. We got about a half an ounce of butter shots in there. We're going to, just for funsies, throw in an ounce of vanilla vodka. And then we're going to top this off with hot coffee. The worst part of the metric system is when you're lifting weights because it just makes you feel so weak. No. 98 kilograms? This is nothing, but it's killing me. There should never be a measuring system where you you can both have ounce by weight and ounce by volume. That should never be a thing. It's just because... That shouldn't be a thing. The the imperial system, right? Our, our brains can work <laughs> in so many different dimensions, apparently. Uh. Yeah, I'm trying really hard to like make good defenses. So the thing about hot buttered rum is that when you get it, it's a solid, and you just gotta sit here and stir it until it dissolves in your hot beverage. And that looks about done, hopefully. If not, somebody's chewing their drink. Exactly. Yeah, that'd be delicious. This just delicious. smells so good already. And then we're gonna top this off with a pretty hefty help into that cold foam. And yeah, there's that. That's beautiful. David, there we go. you want to do the oh. honors? No, that's our guess. No, Jeff All got right, the I'm last still one. And he's still on working on his. Oh. Do oh, it. Boy. It's cool. I'm gonna make Chrissy try the next one. Or well, selling cell phones, I can try this one too. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the same bubble. Try to get a smell off of it because that's the thing that covers everything. Oh my god. You want to try this? Because it's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be mad if that ended up on a special board. We're all, well, we got a lot of hot buttered rum oh. left, so it might. <laughs> it's going to That is really good. Everyone's going to come in and order that now. Oh. Okay. oh, I'm going to. All right, good, because our last one is going to be a rum chata delightful goodness situation. Yeah, I held up on the rum chata because oh. I know you and yet you tried to cut me off after three, when none I of which was, involved I'm rum chata. Sorry. I heard something. I apologize. <laughs> but I didn't want to use any of the same liquors. All right. So we're going to go back to our shaker. And we're going to visit our rum chata because it is so good. And it can basically do no wrong. All right, y'all. So we're going to do an ounce and a half of rum chata into our jigger here. Dump that right into the shaker. And then rinse that out. Rum chata, like any other cream liqueur, is just going to make a mess out of everything, regardless of what you do to try to prevent it. Then we're going to get our wet chocolate liqueur. About an ounce of that into the shaker. And then we're going to throw some cold brew coffee in there. Whoop. Maybe a little more. There we go. Feel like it's enough, you're wrong. <laughs> and the last two steps, we're gonna do about a half ounce of our house spice simple syrup. We really want that cinnamon spice to come through. And we're just gonna do one quick dash of cardamom bitters. Because cardamom bitters are 
So good. All right. Pop that on your other shake cream. Shake the crap out of it. You get it all incorporated. A pepper fryer for a pepper fryer. And then we are just going to pour the whole thing right into this Collins glass here. And I am not going to put ice in it for now. Normally I would put ice in it. I would garnish it with a dollop of whipped cream and a little shake of cinnamon sugar. But because we have had so much hard times like trying to pour stuff out of glasses, for the sake of my own sanity and my bar top, I'm not going to do that right now. But normally it would be very pretty, I promise you. We got, we got some dick comments in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? Here, here's an idea. We're going to put it into this martini instead. It's got that nice little cream head on it. No, this way I can still garnish it and make it pretty. Shut up. Don't judge me. <laughs> All right, we're going to throw a tiny dollop of whipped cream on top. A little bit of cinnamon sugar. Or cinnamon sugar. It's just cinnamon. What am I talking about? And that's it! Yeah. It's super simple. It's super cute and pretty. It looks like Christmas. It looks like Christmas, and it's going to taste like a party in your mouth. Get a good shot of that before I destroy it. <laughs> All right. Boop. Who wants the dollop of whipped cream? Chrissy. Chrissy, that's all you. Does it have booze in it too? Fuck yeah, it does. No, you were just saying. No, the whipped cream is just oh, no, the dollop of Yeah. Here, that way you guys, your same household. It's everywhere. Share. It's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps coming. It won't stop. All right. All right. It's like it's like drinking a rum shot of cake. Like it's just oh, it's so good and rich, but not like rich, overwhelming rich. Well, the goal of it was to make it taste kind of like a liquid cinnamon roll, and yeah. I think I nailed it. So it's like taking all the parts of a cinnamon roll that aren't good, and I can't think of what those are, but I'm sure there's something. It's like just the magic. <laughs> Literally like the fat to diabetes that comes in a cinnamon roll. All the good stuff, right? Is that it? You got any more? All right, guys. So that is it. That is all we are doing this week for real this time. Next week, if I can get all my ducks in a row and actually um, play with things early on, we might be playing with some molecular gastronomy. What? I don't know. Um, we might be doing science. I hope we do science. I want to do science. You so did science. I did magic, actually. I mean, people call bartending modern day alchemy. I'm not saying I'm a wizard, but. I'll say it. You're a wizard. <laughs> a wizard. All right. Cool. So that is our mixology segment. We do this every single show, whether it be from something from our sponsor or something we just make up. Um, we do have plans for the next couple episodes coming up. Next week is going to be really, really awesome. We're going to have some nerd guests on. And it's going to be all kinds of cool alchemy. Like, 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 like Caitlin was saying before, it's going to be awesome. Just wait until the one after that. Like actual magic. Yeah. So again, thank you, Madhouse Coffee. Uh, every single one of our cocktails we made today had their product in it. Uh, I think it really made a huge difference with some of these ones, especially some of the ones that we're coming up with. Uh, we'll probably have them all on special this week, so if you guys pop in, uh, we'll definitely have it available. So we're gonna hit the BRB button again. We're gonna head back over to the couch and we'll get to our next segment. So here, we'll see you guys in a second.
All right, we are back. So we are back at the couch here, and we have our buddy Jeff sitting over there next to us. I just realized I forgot my mobile cam. I was going to grab that. Okay. That's not good. It's all the way back my there. Phone's way over there. I'll get it. Catching right. us after all those great drinks. What a great segment, the what Mixology an awesome fun segment. time, right? It's good stuff. Got some more Madhouse here in my cup. Um, so, yes, a couple a couple of announcements here and that we're back on the couch. We are Twitch affiliated. I did see a couple people sub through yep. here. I'm sorry if I missed that. We're new to this. Thank you guys so much. We're hoping to build this channel and make it something something really fun and special. Um, but what an interesting time we're in, right? So we've got our, our friend Jeff Aiken here. If we go mobile cam. Oh, hey! hey we can kind of see him because we do have a giant sneeze guard uh, <laughs> protecting Because this is us. like the most COVID-friendly place there is. Like, if you're in the Vancouver area and you come to Vault 31, you're good, right? Like, you guys are disinfecting everything. You're keeping your head counts down. You got the sneeze guards up. I, I am uh, I'm totally, like, you can see my pandemic pompadour here. I'm totally that guy trying to do everything right here and i feel completely <laughs> safe i don't feel like i'm putting anyone else at risk being here so david chrissy everybody thank you for keeping this uh keeping this safe absolutely well cool thanks for being here uh so we are gonna switch we're gonna play some games we're gonna ask some fun questions we're gonna have a good time here y'all um what are we playing oh here we go let's see uh let's switch back to these lazy boys just subscribe <clears throat> We got another subscribe. Yeah, these lazy boys. Uh, I'll try to call these out when I can. Last Unicorn. What else we got? C5 props. Oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. Hey, Pixelated I follow. Guardian. Look at that. Me. And Don, thank you. It's good to see you, Don. Thanks for tuning in. This is awesome. It's good to see you. All I haven't right. seen you in far too long. Well, we might have some technical issues because my capture card isn't popping up. Give oh. me a second here. Hmm. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to roll. Yeah, it's game time. This is terrifying. I tell you what, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a big gamer, but like I'm I'm not like hardcore. So right now, oh, that's I'm fine. It's it's kind of just there to distract people. Really, no, it's good. It'll be fun. But my big game is right now. Oh, CSC five props. Sign oh. oh, sorry to hear that. But oh. hey, thanks for joining us. You're always awesome to have in the chat. Hope he hope he ends up doing okay. Let's yeah, my see. big games right now. It's right. It's it's pandemic time. We're all dusting off the classics, playing some Coder Two, Knights of the Old Republic. Ooh, yeah. So again, I'm doing a dark side blaster build this time. So a little, a little different. And then uh, the Outer Worlds. I don't know if anybody out there's done the Outer Worlds Private Division. Outer Worlds is super fun. I haven't put too much time into it. So I finished a playthrough, and they just released their first DLC, Perils, uh, Perils of the Peril of Gorgon. And uh, just uh, just started that off. It's kind of a almost film noir uh, mystery that yeah they have you solve in the context of the the game. But uh, it's good stuff. Of course, live issues. Bear with me. Right. There's no safety net when you go live. Yeah, you know that's why we that's why we do this live, I guess. So let's see, what are we what are we missing here? Something's not coming up right. And pretty haven't tried uh, what Outer Worlds? I strongly recommend it. My cousin was on the develop or on the help lead the development team. He's he's kind of a quiet guy about stuff, so I won't give him away, but um, he works private division up there. They're a great uh, development comp game development company, and uh, they really they nailed it with the Outer Worlds. My opinion. Well, I guess in a couple others they won some awards. So there's that. But that is freaking sweet. I don't know why I can't get my capture card to pop up here. That, that's kind of a bummer. Of course, it, this would be the one thing that breaks. <laughs> Huh. Well, while we're doing, have you, I don't know if anybody out here is a Mass Effect fan, but have you heard the rumors? Yes. Right? The rumors. No, tell me rumors. Oh, so N7 Day coming up in just, uh, what, six days? November 7th. All of the voice actors are getting together. Jennifer, hey, everybody, um, are getting together for a big announcement. And the rumor is it's going to be a remaster of the whole trilogy, the original trilogy coming out. Oof. I tell you what, if that happens, I am taking two months off from the world. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I think my wife is watching, so I don't know if she has uh, proved that yet or not. But hey, Giselle, I'm, that remaster comes out. I'll see you see you after Christmas. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Bear with me here. Trying to trying to get this work in. Great if my capture card died. That's just That'd what we want right now. Okay, well that's working. It is an Elgato. See, we got some professionals in the in the chat. No, it's an Elgato. It's an HD sixty uh, S. Those little ones. You just plug in the USB. Um, it's on, but I'm not getting any feed from it. So hmm, it was working earlier. It's too bad you're missing a great game. I'm doing amazing Dang, right now. Yeah, let's see. I'm super <laughs> winning. I've got all the points. Or the ball, or I don't know what we're playing. Why did we decide that we were uh, playing? We're, you have all the points. We'll just, the points. yeah, we don't want to give too much away, right? Yeah, I mean, they're not even wonder see if, it, so. All we know is that Chrissy is ahead by a lot. A lot. Yes. <laughs> but I'm doing amazing, Dominated. which says a lot. Like, if I'm doing amazing and being beaten by this much, she's next level. Well, you know what? I'm going to roll, I'm going to roll some B footage here of some Madhouse coffee while we're hanging oh, out. Oh, yeah. So, all right. Y'all can look at that for a second while I try to figure this out. Because this is, this is great. Way to break it. No. Dang it. Episode three and everything's broken. <laughs> I don't think we're the only franchise to have a lot of things break in episode three. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Uh, let's see. Uh, in player says, dumb question. Do you have the game capture software open? Uh, no. On the PC. So maybe not such a dumb question. But maybe you do. Am I dumb? Do I have to have that on? <laughs> Y'all, I'm Did new at this. Did you just save the day? I'm new at this. In really prayer have... is a professional. Yeah, so... I'm, I'm kind of thinking that she just saved the day. I don't she's know. a big Let's deal. She knows yeah. what she's talking about. Let's see. Uh, well, that beautiful footage is rolling of some Madhouse coffee products. Peel myself out of my hoodie. See, see Ooh, I've got a good out. friend who's an aggressive coffee snob. Like he'll bring his own coffee to places. Um, and I feel like I would totally bring him to Madhouse and I, and I, and I think, I think he would come and he would drink the coffee. That's like the biggest compliment I can give. Did I not see the pit boy? Did you not see the pit boy? I just saw that on the B roll. Yeah. It's hanging out over there actually where the oh pizza is. Empire There's so much stuff in here to look at. Like, it's hard to find. Yeah, see it all. There are times that I come into work and I'm like, where did we get that? And David's just like, it's been here the whole time. <laughs> that was one of the first things I put in here. Well, back before like COVID and everything, we removed everything from the bar. We used to have so many things. Oh, trust me. I know. <laughs> Trying to work around it was one of my favorite things well, about my job. I was constantly <laughs> knocking stuff over. Or like the Rubik's Cube, always playing with the Rubik's Cube. That little four square one is the only one that I can do. Uh, so, like console system, I mean. I hope this makes sense. I tell you what, I've never... This is my first time ever on Twitch at all. First time? In any way. I've never this, even watched anything on it. This is my fourth. That's not bad. It's, it's my it's second, so... Okay, like, hey, yeah. But I, I am uh, I am getting... Um, I, I, wow, wow. There's a lot that goes into this. Oh, man. You may need it. to unplug the capture card and replug it in. Wait, I think in I got prayer, it. I, I think I got like it. I think you, I got it. I think 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 I got it. Work I think I got support? it. It's not like my service desk. <laughs> Maybe I don't got it. Oh. Oh. Let's see. Or maybe I do. Huh? 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 Oh, no. No. Oh. Maybe. And player also says you may need to uh, replug it in. Unplug it and replug it in. Um, I did that. Have okay. you tried turning it off and back on again? Have you tried kicking it? Did you blow I, on it? I Is did, it a like, Nintendo that. 64 cartridge? Can we just blow on it? It's initializing. Oh, we got... Oh! oh. Did you, oh maybe. maybe there. Oh, no, but we're not seeing it oh, on the... You know. Did you sacrifice a live chicken? We thought it was working. Maybe. Oh, hey, I think we got there. Hey. Look at that. Hey. All right. How long did that take? Good 20 minutes? Long hey, enough. You know what? Thank you, everybody, for being so patient. That was incredible. Wow. Yeah, thanks, y'all. Hey, we got there. Um, I I wish I knew what it was. I just poked a bunch of buttons. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in player saved the day. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go with that. You did save the day. Um, Everybody got their Xbox controller? We're yeah. playing some it. fusion frenzy, I guys. And I did figure out uh, next time maybe we should uh, 
go actual mic instead of headset because I can hear everything happening on the console. Cool. It's super distracting. Uh, <laughs> it's, um, your left ear should be able to turn it down. Turn yep. Okay. All right. I have no idea. I haven't played this. Doesn't matter. Okay. Cool. We're just going to do it. Me neither. <laughs> uh, if, has anyone... Fusion Frenzy is amazing. If you guys haven't played it, I, I thought about like doing something fun like Mario Party. Um, however, I still want to be friends with everybody by the time we're done. <laughs> and Mario Party has a tendency to just ruin friendships uh, of any kind. And so Fusion Frenzy is kind of the fun variant of that because it really doesn't matter if you win or not because um, nobody really knows what they're doing. But we're all hopping in. We're gonna pick our characters here. Caitlin, Caitlin, uh, yeah. Hey, oh, join. Oh, that goes. Take, take her, taking her time. All right, Zach, we are here. Jet, Gina, and Samson. <laughs> Scoot over a little bit. I love this game. It's so old. I love it. <laughs> it's not even that old. It's the original Xbox. It came out in what, like 2001, 2002? As I say with an upwards inflection. <laughs> early 2000s. The early 2000s. Aughts. Avoid the falling bombs. That's good. All right. Now, while that's loading, I forgot to put up my little questionnaire here. I'm going to do really poorly because I can only see a quarter of the screen. I honestly have no idea. What am I doing? Am oh, I yeah, driving right. a car? What am I doing? No, we are <laughs> collecting these little doohickeys. So A jumps. Uh, B will like punch people. Oh, God. And we're just trying to collect a bunch of these. How did I fall over? It's essentially just a series of mini games. All right. So in case you guys are just joining us, we have Jeff Aiken here on the couch with us. JeffAiken.com for all the infos, the podcast, the speaking, the whatever. Yeah, Jeff You're runs. in Oregon City. Vote for me for city commissioner. That's an option. He is campaigning for city commissioner. So if we have some Oregon viewers, absolutely check that out, JeffAiken.com. Uh, you can also go, I believe, for for uh, Aiken for change. That's the number four. And that's assuming you haven't voted yet, right? Because, I mean, seriously, it's like in two it's days right there, is the election. Oh, gosh. All right, don't ah. pick up the bombs. And this year, like, the water and soil conservation positions are really heated. Uh, have, you come a, a, have you come across a lot of big hurdles? Me personally? I, you know, not so. Oh, look at that. Player 1-1. One, yeah. one. I was not player 1. We did a thing. <laughs> yeah, keep up, guys. This is kind of was a I fun game. Oh, I was player 4. I came in last place. <laughs> but, you know, you, you were a strong contributor. Yeah. Oh. I'm just going to pull up a couple different little questions I got here. So, yeah. So, we like to try to interact with everybody. I see we got some people in chat. Uh, if you got questions, either for Jeff or myself, anything about the bar for Caitlin, let us know. Like, for example, let's, uh, let's pull up some fun hypotheticals here. <laughs> or for, like, me, like, where I got my really cool sweater at. Yeah, where did, did you, you get, get that, that sweater? sweater? Jinx. Give me a coat. <laughs> Dang it. Vault 31 store Wait, store.com oh, yeah. nice. yeah. vault 31 store.com yeah so about some of those announcements before we had some technical difficulties uh we do have a merch store we're finally launching it we got some cool stuff uh switch and there's some cool stuff on there i mean you see the hat you can see the hoodie we got there. some new hats we got some hoodies we got tank tops we got all sorts of fun stuff masks are on there like, notebooks nice pad really nice women's tank tops like <laughs> women's cut are you showing people your boobies no my that was the top. tank top. It's razor cut because, you know, like some are just like unisex or whatever. Like, <laughs> it's razor cut. Yeah, what do you all want to know? I see some people, some, some gears yeah, turning in there. Yeah, this is like your chance. What do you want to know? I just realized Jeff can also see my questions. That's I can. Fun. But he doesn't know which one I'm going to read. Exactly. There's a lot on here. I don't yeah, know if I you... wrote a bunch of weird hypotheticals. There is merch. Everybody understands, like, the prep that went into this. It's got, like, a hundred some The new merch questions. is also really, really pretty. It's super colorful. For example, what hybrid animal would make the perfect pet as we get into our next game? Well, the perfect, hi the perfect pet would be a hybrid between, let's say, an Xbox and a PlayStation. Oh, we're going that Because, frankly, kind of the only living thing that belongs in my household are other people. <laughs> I love animals. Don't hear me say I don't like animals, but I'm just not a fan of having pets. Oh, gosh. That's fine. Do, you, uh, do children count as pets? Do you yeah, want sort of. them? <laughs> I got a cat you can have. Yeah. Ah! All right. We're rolling. Oh, we're rolling. God. So I had a, I had I a dog. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. Everything went to hell real fast. Ah! 
I had a dog who I loved ah! with all of my heart. She died from bone cancer. Ugh, it's tragic. devastating. But that yeah. was my that was my pet experience, and I feel like that's enough experience for me. That's fair. It's always sad when we lose pets. It's and, absolutely devastating. Um, and who needs all that like hair and fur all over your couches, your clothes? I used to call that single person glitter. Oh, I like that. Back when I was single. As someone whose wardrobe is oh, mostly of black of and has a yeah. small fawn dog, um, my life is just trying to make sure that I'm not covered in dog hair all the time. Nice job, P3. Who is that? That's me. That's you. I just really go. <laughs> I won something. This game was made in 2001, so it was before like names <laughs> were really a thing. Congratulations, player three. Congratulations. In player would like to know social security, mother's maiden name, phone number, you know, just the usual questions. <laughs> yeah, that's available online. Um, <laughs> <At> JeffAiken.com. <laughs> yeah, and shockingly, I'm probably not exaggerating. It's probably all there. You can go to so. JeffAiken.com, find all of that information out, and <laughs> then go to Vault31Store.com. Yeah, and then spend like And crazy. spend all of his money. So I was fortunate enough to check out a couple of your wrestling streams, unfortunately, before the pandemic hit. Well, not unfortunately. I was what able is to the check point of this particular game? Just stay game? on. This the, is sumo. On. Yeah, basically stay on the platform. You can kind of see the the. Oh, the platform the, is going away. Yeah, I've been able to work for some pretty great pro wrestling companies. Um, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, uh, the West Coast Wrestling Connection used to be here local. Uh, Paragon Pro Wrestling out of Las Vegas, and uh, that one was a lot of fun. We were on Pop TV. For a long time, Pop TV recently famous with uh, because of Shit's Creek, which is a great show. Okay, that's oh, why. I, I like that show. That's where that sounds familiar. Yeah, that's I actually really got cool. to. I, I had the opportunity. The, ah! oh, the ability on there. I got now. to say coming up Shit's Creek, which yeah, was always okay, fun. Bye. Crap! Uh, come on! Uh, come on, <laughs> uh, just... Samson! <laughs> yeah, you flex that. Yeah, that, well, that's basically, that's almost exactly like Xbox original graphics of what I look like. Oh, it's right so there. good. Upscaled even. Uh, Imper says that they are going to do a giveaway with the merch that they buy with all of your money after they steal your identity, Jeff. Oh, that's cool with me. That Perfect. Works. Oh, wow. Look at those pictures. That's yeah, going so we back got to the a, beard We got days. a fun little photo reel playing now with uh, some photos of Jeff. Yeah, so there's some fun stuff going on there. <laughs> Any of these have some fun stories? So, uh, well, there's, of course, the, the city commissioner uh, campaign one. So we just saw a picture. That's me meeting with the Optimist Club in Oregon City. Be excellent to each other. I love the mask. You know, I, I live it. And that's me. I'm, I was basically the rock. I mean, the only, I mean, I had a necklace, a fanny pack. I, I forgot you were, the rock used to rock fanny packs and it's so great. I love it. I, I rocked one until mine broke. They're pretty convenient. My staff made those for me. Cornhole game there. Are they still your staff? They are actually. <laughs> after, are after, we still uh, your staff, David? You are, yeah. After right. we, uh, after we all dressed up as you. It depends who volunteers <laughs> to clean the bar. But no, there was one that went up there earlier. Me in the ring. Oh, it's me and my beautiful wife Giselle. Who's an amazing person. Used to work with you, David. Yeah. So right. fun, small world moment. Uh, I met Jeff through a coworker of mine, Giselle, who is an awesome human being. Uh, Jeff and Giselle are now married with a wonderful daughter. I hear. Yep. Five years old. Five years old. Oh, dang, has it been five years? It has Holy been five crap. years. I remember when that popped out. Right. Yeah. It seems like it was a minute ago. It, wow. Well, it alternately seems like a minute ago and thirty years. Oh my like, gosh. Yeah. No kidding. Wow. Yeah, earlier there was a shot there of me and my broadcast partner, Todd Kennelly. If you're into pro wrestling, Todd Kennelly used to work for TNA Impact Wrestling. Um, he booked and put together a tour of Australia with Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. Far out. It was great working with him. Um, he and I have been up and down the West Coast and into the, the mids there. That's me and my kit at home. Yeah, so if you guys missed the beginning of the episode, uh, I was in a band for a minute with Mr. Jeff, a fantastic rhythmist. That's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. That, that band, it, it spawned our great friendship. That's where Giselle and I met and then got married from. A lot of good things came out of that band. Yeah, it was some rad times. I mean, it was a good band. Unfortunately, a career in music didn't come out of that band. But, uh, you know, that'll happen at some hard, point. It's hard to do. But you got a good friendship. Exactly. And it's the friendships that matter? Question mark? <laughs> we're, we're riding boats. Your face is a boat. Wait, I forgot. Okay. Oh, you... oh, God. What? The really fun thing about Fusion Frenzy is every game. <laughs> oh, that's not the answer. <laughs> every game's easy because everybody just is... took me out. Oh yeah. Or Caitlin? No. Who's no, that? I don't. I, I don't actually out. know what we're doing. <laughs> well, now you're avoiding stuff. Ah! 
Oh, I see it as literally well, just yeah, survive. Yeah, that didn't last very long. I that thought it was well. a race. We're going to go ahead and probably just start that one over yeah. again. <laughs> and I guarantee you, I'm just going to go Try not to. It was right there, right? If we could just read. We got the last the unicorn. Says she's five, yeah. She's five, which means she was born uh, January of this year? Uh, she was, yeah. No, she was born, yeah, uh, July 2015. <laughs> I can't believe it's been five years. It's crazy right? to think about. Um, I've unfortunately lost a lot of track of time during our circumstance that we're in. Yes. All right. So time works differently right now for sure. Oh, oh, oh I'm oh, gone. You're off, that. off to a great start. You All know, right. back in the nineties, cause I've been alive that long. Yeah. So there you go. Last unicorn, five years oh. old. It happened so fast. <gasps> oh, oh, everything's fine. <laughs> but, uh, back in the nineties, I was in a band down in San Diego called full stop. We got signed to a record label. We toured, we had a record out. Like I lived as a musician for about nine months, <laughs> that's about all I could afford. It's but, tough. Uh, yeah, I've I've tried multiple times. I've I mean I've lost track of how many groups and various bands and stuff I've been in. I'm in a pretty rad one now. Uh, our last episode, Tom was our guest, and he was another drummer, of course. Because drummers are rad, and we I, are. I guess they're the only guests I can get. Does that mean that <laughs> if our next guest isn't a drummer, that they just can't be on the show? Uh, yes. Actually, I believe our next guest is in the chat. Oh. Oh, I'm not paying attention. Oh, yeah, this is like the Tron one. The lights, the light cycles. Yep. Where am I? And this is another we're just trying to collect the stuff. I don't like. know what I'm doing. <laughs> I feel like I'm hitting them, but I'm not. Yeah, like I'm going am through I them, and oh, I wonder if I have to people? hit a thing. I think I'm dying more than going through. I don't know what I'm doing. Wee. I remember this being easier. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm doing much. I forgot what I'm sp definitely okay. moving. Oh, we're supposed around. to have a longer tail. I is this how like to... Snake? How we're supposed to get really long tails? And you know, like each not... game has instructions at the beginning of it, but we don't need to read those. We don't yeah, why would we read those? I mean, they put them in English. How am I supposed to read that? Yeah. If it's not IKEA instructions, I cannot follow it. Oh, I thought we had our guest in the chat, but he uh, he may have taken off. But we do have a uh, those lazy boys. They will be on our show next week. Well, and this is cool, right? Because you're here. Like one, one. Look at I. Nice. Beat the snot out of you guys, because I figured it out first. How you had the lowest score? How does that work? I had 170. We're never playing this one again. <laughs> no, you had to like make a full circle and not have somebody run over your chain and circle those oh things my gosh, in. That's how it works. Yeah, I figured it I, out. I was like, I don't think anybody knows what they're doing. Uh, yeah, I'm just, like, I, have to I just pick kept up all on the seeing stuff. my points go up. I finally just had an oh, oh duh moment. Wow. We're doing a misguided Usually missiles Usually, I'm the random acts of blondness. I figured that one out quick. All right. Use your remote controlled bombs to blow up other players. Yeah, we should probably read these now. Let's there we see. go. But yeah, so you got the the, the lazy boys are going to be on here next week, you were saying? Yeah. Because uh, you're here every Sunday, right? Yes. Um, I don't necessarily have permission to use his name, so I'm not going to be doing that. He's a he's a rad regular that we met in the bar, of course. Um, rad individual. Uh, he's actually been doing a couple of uh, charities lately. Uh, everything from... Uh, cancer research to a, a couple different children foundations and he's going to be on and it's going to be another rad time cool i feel like i'm just blowing myself up i don't know that i have a bomb you nope. hit uh, the b button i think to get the bomb oh yep yeah it just i just threw it off the thing so that's cool oh and Whoa. then i blew myself up with it well, i'm feeling pretty good about my zero right now i'm going for the golf <laughs> score here <laughs> the not blowing up anything the uh I'm really going pacifist. pacifist. This is my pacifist run. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh gosh. Have you ever done tried a pacifist run of a game? Like that is that is yes. no joke. Um. Oh, I mean, I, I guess yes and no. Uh, so I, I've been playing a lot of platformers lately, and one of my favorite ones of all time is one that came out not too long ago uh, called Cuphead. Um, and Cuphead's kind of a boss rush game, 2D platformer. It's made in like this 30s style rubber band animation. Just absolutely gorgeous game. There's a couple uh, run and gun style levels um, where you can get a P rank or a pacifist rank if you don't kill anything just by basically getting to the end. I've been trying to get those done. Uh, but the game is wicked hard. Yeah. Aw, uh, thanks, Flash Unicorn. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing as I go. You can read that from back here. I have my phone set up so I can see the chat. Oh, yeah, she's smart like that. Um, you also Technology. know that player four is me. 
Or is Kate doing good? I feel like I'm doing good. Maybe uh, I'm not. I've won two. Like I said, it's fusion frenzy. No one really does good. Well, just kinda, I'm player three. Just kind of is. Well, luckily my character is short enough that I don't have to do anything on this level. Well, I won the last two. That's why. I, <laughs> what do I need? What am I doing? We gotta pick up these little uh, Wu Tang Clan. Wu Tang. Images, whatever these are, and not get murdered by the. Oh, thing. that's right. Sounds, so this feels like an American ninja, duck, and then ninja you've got warrior. Jump, so you're ducking and jumping over propellers. Oh, I see the duck there. That changes everything. Oh, game changer. Oh, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna be the best at being the worst. I'm just gonna stand here. <laughs> as long as you're the best at something. And let myself right? die. Oh my gosh. I wonder, do you lose some for that? So I know we're not doing a lot of the the wrestling thing, unfortunately. But how are the podcasts been going? How's the what? Your podcast. You know, it's been doing really well. I've got a, you know, I think one of the secrets, right, to a, to a good podcast is finding other good podcasts and partnering with them. And it's weird because I'm super niche, right? You know, so I've got uh, the leadership thing going. I got the Star Trek thing going. Yes. And they're not necessarily the same same group on there, but. No, what's, I imagine those are very different communities. But what's incredible though is the overlap in like, like I've been I've been able to adapt so many things into what I do as a manager, as a leader, just from what I've learned. Like, I was in a new job, and our management team met every day for two hours every day, and Dang I it. hated it. It was it was brutal, and I just <laughs> like I'm like I want Captain Kirk meetings, right? I want those meetings where you get together, splat the most bugs, and defend your burger. I usually like to get together and splat the most bugs as well. Yeah, that sounds like good. But we, but you know, I want Captain Kirk means you get together, you you put out your stuff, you solve the problem, you get out, and that's kind of what prompted doing the podcast for me was like, you can do this. That's super fun. I I haven't had the guts to start a podcast as I sit here with a Twitch show. Yeah, you've taken on quite a bit here. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this thing out still. Um, so we got to protect a burger. I'll protect my burger. I will murder these bugs. Smash protect someone else. Die, 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 die. I have successfully... Oh, there we go. Okay, we're getting bugs. But they can go over and chop... I'm going to chop your oh, burger. Oh, no. Don't eat my oh, burger. All the bugs. Hey. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow, I thought I was doing great there. I thought I was, second. too, and then everything, everything got fast. <laughs> I can't deal. I can't deal. I'm just going to... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, it's these purple guys. They're the ones who screw everything up. Oh, gosh. The murder hornets. Murder? Oh, no. <laughs> burger hornets. Oh, burger, no. burger hornets. There you go. Uh, who had burger hornets on their 2020 bingo card? <laughs> Boom. One again. Murder hornets, to me, prove that everything about 2020 is the result of time travel gone wrong. <laughs> we Someone screwed up somewhere in the chain. So you think about it, right? If you remember all the way back to January, and I know that'll take some work to remember that far back, but we were going to have World War III. Like, that was a thing that was about to happen. So some people traveled back in the time, and they're like, no, we can't let World War III happen. And they, they stopped World War III, but they set Australia on fire. And it's like, oh, shoot, that sucks. So let's go and uh, fix Australia. And then, oh, shoot, we started a global pandemic. Oh. All right, well, let's go back and fix that. Nope, we made murder hornets. That was a mistake. <laughs> then they go back to stop the murder hornets, and they were successful. But when they did that, they introduced systemic racism <laughs> into our society. Oh, I see. Oh, that's always been here. Yeah, all and then all, uh, it's all, you know, I just need them to stop coming back and fixing it. I was going to say, is it, is it just basically trying to find the lesser evil at a point? I mean, it's at this is point, I'm just like, thing? give me the wildfires. Like, at least we could drive away from those. I can't drive away from these bugs eating my burger. Oh, gosh. These burgers look kind of... Come here. Come here. Die. Ah! Get back! So I feel like we need to open the big can no! of worms here. <laughs> and since you are a musician, uh, list off some of your influences. Well, Neil Peart, hands down, number one. Rest in peace. Rest in uh, peace, Mr. Neil, unfortunately. You know, I, with with him, I, there's so much you can talk about, but he was one and uh, fourth song on, or the third song, right? Third song on their Moving Pictures album from Drummer 81. Drummer of Rush for those that are... Yeah. Are... are yeah. Unknown. <laughs> but Limelight, he talks about how much um, you know he didn't want to be in the limelight. And so Rush hung it up in mid-2015. In fact, we saw them at the uh, Moda Center in July of 2015, just a few days before my daughter was born. Oh, neat. I was hoping that she was born there, right? Like, just that would like, so rad. Yeah, she was born in a Rush. Cause the last <laughs> Neil's Rush like, get out of my way. I can do this. Yeah, I'm like, he's an honorary doctor. He's got a PhD. I'm like, is there a doctor in the house who can help me out here? Oh, my gosh. 
But uh, it would be the pinnacle of my life if that ever happened. But they, uh, we're ducking and jumping. Okay, there we go. So they, uh, so they hung it up, and then they just disappeared out of the, uh, <laughs> out of the world. And turned out he had brain cancer. Uh huh. And he and he died, but he got to die in peace. Like you know, he wasn't uh, <laughs> bothered by everyone. But such a brilliant drummer. But um, so definitely Neil. Oh, there you go, Neil. Uh, Buddy Rich. Buddy Rich, yes, incredible jazz drummer. You know, when I was a kid in high school, I played in jazz band, avoiding electricity to survive the longest. I was in, <laughs> but I was in jazz band in high school. I hated tagline. jazz. I didn't get it. Right, I was fourteen or whatever. Jazz is a hard one to get. It is. Uh, especially early on, because I was kind of in that same boat as well. Um, well. I have nothing but respect for jazz as well. If anything, it's probably carved uh, the musician I am out today because of jazz. Um, but yeah, it did not make sense to me early yeah, on. Yeah, I just didn't get it. And University of Idaho out of Moscow, they have this great uh, jazz festival every year that my high school band got to play in. And Dizzy Gillespie... Dizzy Gillespie was the guest artist there my freshman nice. year. We got to jam with him. That's amazing. Uh, well, you think worthy. it's amazing. I'm an idiot. And the whole time I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm going to be it. a rock star. What do I need with an old trumpet player? <laughs> oh. Didn't listen to a word he said. Hmm. It was my senior year of high school. I listened to the Buddy Rich record, Mercy, Mercy, Mercy. And that changed everything. Like, I got it for the first time. Cool. And, uh, but it was too late at that point. I got... But uh, yeah, but through that at that University of Idaho Jazz Festival, I got to see Dizzy Gillespie, um, Louis Belson. Louis Belson is a great drummer, old jazz drummer. He was one of the first uh, double bass drum players. That's where that name sounds familiar. Okay, I was trying to say he innovated or discovered something. Yeah. And then uh, Eric Singer, uh, who is currently a drummer for Kiss, but he was just a studio guy for a really long time, and I used to watch him. With uh, Sabbath. Nice. And then uh, Kiss in the 90s watched him a lot. But there was, I remember being in high school, my dad is so cool, uh, bought me this little Ludwig four piece kit and uh, tolerated me playing that thing all the time. But I would, um, you know, I'd play different Rush songs or Kiss songs, sometimes some Metallica or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'd play like, I'd play the, you know, Rush, a show of hands VHS, and I'd record myself. With her old big old camcorder, playing drums, and then I'd watch them side by side and try and like improve myself um, watching that stuff. Yes, yeah, it's good stuff. I don't have any cool stories like that. <laughs> I I feel like I've always tried to uh, either follow like famous musician musicians or meet them, and it, I feel like I'm either I'm just not lucky enough or I'm, I'm not trying hard enough. One of the two. But it just kind of never—it's never panned out. Yeah, but you know, with five laps, Ooh, five laps with meeting. Because I've met quite a few musicians in my day, um, and a lot of it was because my—I have a sister who's just a year younger than me, and we hung out all the time and would go to shows. And she was one of those fearless people who would just kind of, you know, put themselves in whatever situation to go back. And so, like, we met. Oh, Supple- I went the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> we met Sepultura, Megadeth. Um, a couple others, but like a big thing I learned there and then working in pro wrestling, right? Like I got to know a lot of wrestlers. In fact, one of my favorite things in pro wrestling is I have an ongoing text thread with D'Lo Brown. I don't know if anybody no remembers way. D'Lo Brown. He's a WWE, former WWE intercontinental and European champion. Yeah, nice name drop. From, uh, but we have an ongoing thread just talking about Star Trek. <laughs> like every, cool. uh, every yes. Thursday, discover a new Discovery episode comes out and we're like, what'd you think? And stuff, but what I learned, you know, meeting a lot of these people is, you know, they're just there's people, and their job just happens to be music, you know. And so it's like, I might be able to, you know, s- squeeze in a couple minutes here, a couple hours there, playing. They just do it forty plus Good hours gerb. a week. That's too cool. Sorry, I always have a victory dance when I win. I'm like, you yes, should. It happened. <laughs> Bombs cause loss of control. See, I didn't oh, read that the first time. Oh, that's what was happening. And now I know. I felt like I had to pick oh, those up. They look like I they were picked up. I kind of it out after I hit like six of them. They were picked up. <laughs> so David and I are same household. So when we play video games, I don't win. I never win. So when I do win, I get really excited. Go! And it's only when you're doing interviews and you're super distracted and trying to multitask. Like when I'm not going the wrong way because I don't know what arrows <laughs> mean. 
I need to stop hitting the bombs. Arrgh! Yeah, see, that was my... I thought they were, like, power-ups. <laughs> you, you thought that the black smoke coming from the back of your car well, was the power-up? Well, I, I learned. You never know. Thing. Smoke you never means know. fast. Yeah. Have you ever seen a propane-injected diesel trucks race? No, Lots I can't smoke. say that I <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a lot of smoke, a lot of pollution. That sounds terrifying Arrgh! and awful. Get out of my way! It's that last turn that gets me every time. Hua, Samsung. Dang, Jeff. I remember when my biceps were that small. <laughs> <laughs> Burning fuse. I think there's there's rhythm ones in here somewhere. We'll eventually have to get just for for funsies. Oh, there's a lot going on here. Get oh, more gosh. paint. Oh gosh, light the fuse, launch rockets. Paint rockets to make them yours. Mark your territory and light the fuse. Light fuse, shoot paint. Copy there's that. no way that this could go poorly. What <laughs> What could go wrong? Hey, good news, there's a time limit. Oh, my anxiety's already going. I feel like we're facing the wrong way. Are we? Oh, I don't know. Wait. Are we supposed to turn around? Is this like a shooting gallery? I don't know what's happening. Uh, Light fuse. Oh, it's a time thing. I get it. I can't ah, actually see my go. character. Boom! No, oh, up oh, so the you top. can paint them and then light. Oh, this is really tough. I don't know what I'm doing. So you hit A. A will paint the little oh, statues. See, the problem is, is that um, the mic or your mic specifically is covering my character. Well, that Good. makes it hard. So I'm just winging it. Well, I, I'm lighting everyone's mind because I forget what to call is it. So, go, go get it. Oh. Is this what it's like to be a firework technician? This is easy. Two buttons. You ever think you've uh, gone down the wrong path as far as like career choice or anything along those you lines? You know, so um, I was talking earlier, earlier about how I was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was going to my A school, um, which is like tech school or whatever, I stood watch at the Potential Nuclear <laughs> Engineering <laughs> Officers School, PNEO school. Uh, that was and, a total uh, accident. <laughs> it was well done, though. But that meant like like literally nine hours a day of sitting at a desk and checking people in. I sat there looking at a green bar report and uh, and a phone. And I remember thinking to myself, like, God, I wish I could turn back time and just not and just do all this differently. But I think you know what what I've learned here. Here's like my wisdom hat. Now I'm in my mid 40s, and I really like who I am. And I really like my family and stuff. I wouldn't change anything. Um, I like my job. I like. I think I made a lot of wrong steps along the way, but they got me to the point where I am now, and I like where I am now. So awesome. I wouldn't change any of it. I think wrong steps, like, make us who we are. I fully agree with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can't. It's almost like again, like with video games, right? You 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 play through once and it's great. Then you throw in the mods and you get the cheat module on there and you give yourself god power and you're like, this game kind of sucks because <laughs> I can do anything. <laughs> Easy. It was a lot more fun when it was hard. And li life is hard. Uh, like running the wrong direction on these treadmills. Yeah, seriously. In fact, like I say a lot, like life is so hard, none of us get out of it alive. And uh, Ooh, you know, that's deep. so. So you want to go out. You want to make mistakes and do stupid things. Oh, just like that. Oh, so like. Whoa! Right. Yeah, I do not want to fall like that, though. This might you... feel like I got the hang. I mean, this is a good metaphor for life. It's like, this might feel like I got the hang of something. Oh, oh yeah. Right down you, a hole. you literally spawn into a drop. That's yeah, we get cool. murder hornets. <laughs> or you're like, hey, I'm on a good spot. And then all of a sudden that part. Just ah, what? I feel I like it's targeting me. Side. I feel like whatever I step on, it's like... <laughs> I'm just gonna wait here, outlast. I'm just gonna push you off the edge. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, this is working out great for me. I like the scream. The scream, yeah. <laughs> oh! Take it. Ah! <laughs> My death perception's off. All right, this is awful. I literally <laughs> just rode on the <laughs> outside and just yeah, did not good move strategy. And them all. Super don't like that one. Cause I won. Yeah, I've been I, uh, before the pandemic. I was jamming with this jazz music musician, a piano player, so good. Um, in fact, he's the same coffee snob I was talking about earlier. He'd take his own coffee to places. But like, I had a moment when I was jamming with him where I'm just like, you know, if I had actually tried when I was younger, or whatever, I probably could have actually done this. Um, 
you know, I could have done the, the musician thing for real because I never went all in. You know, I was always looking for that back door, that safety net. Right. But uh, but still, like, I probably wouldn't like being a musician all the time. I don't think I can drink that much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, the story of like pretty much everyone's lives though there's so many things that you know as when i was younger you know could have should have would have and you know something always stood in the way maybe it was you know people especially in the late 90s early 2000s women in stem were not a big thing and yeah. you know I was told, like, oh, it's such a competitive field. Don't do that. Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, how would my life have been different had I gone that direction? But I'm okay with the person that I've become, given the choices that I made. Some of them not so great. But you know what? I learned from them, and I'm still standing. You're you still know, here. People will think it's crazy, but you know, my wife, Giselle specifically, thinks this is ridiculous. But I think – so I used to work for Regal Cinemas. I used to manage movie theaters. That was a cool, that was a cool job. It's not a cool job right now because they're closed. <laughs> they're not doing well. Not so hot. And uh, But down in Oregon, we would do – down in Salem, actually, a little town I like to call So Lame, Oregon. But uh, they would do this thing called the Cannes Film Festival. You bring three cans of food, get a free movie, get a free small popcorn. Cool. I was running a theater for the sole purpose of shutting it down. They were going to shut it down, tear it down, rebuild. And my, I was supposed to stem the hemorrhaging, you know, as far as profitability went. So I had 11 total staff. And on any given day, we might have 60 customers. For the Cannes Film Festival, we had 1,200. Whoa. Yeah. And so there's this kid, Nathan, and he's at the, the popcorn machine shoveling popcorn. And he's, about, he's, like, he's like, dude, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. And I'm like, Nathan, listen, pressure does one of two things. Pressure either crushes you or it makes a diamond. And here, here we work with diamonds. And I think that's the thing, right? Like, I love that. I think that's yeah. beautiful. We've been through pressure, and pressure make, made us into who we are, and we're diamonds. Yeah, we're surviving it. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah, a really I good outlook. Beautiful. Oh, gosh. Let's scroll through some of these here. <laughs> Did you have one that said something about a house plant? Probably. What yeah, about there's a lot plant? in here. Yeah, I just, I've kind of been just collecting weird hypotheticals over, over time. They're fun, though. Like, if you, had a sl- <laughs> if you had a sleep on sheets made of deli meat or fruit roll-up, what would you do? A deli meat. I, I'd agree. What yeah, kind delicious. of deli meat, though? Well, does it matter? Because fruit roll-ups are going to be sticky and gross anyway. Tem- well, but would it be room temperature? Well, so bed sheets are room like, temperature anyway. You're going to smell deli-meat. like salami all day. And that's awesome. Salami smells delicious. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing I mean, wrong with it. They make garments out of fruit roll-ups. Really? Like oh, yes, underwear? they do, don't they? <laughs> Is that where you're going with that? <laughs> that's where yeah. I'm going. They do make those. Yeah, so why? Like bed sheets, right? Yeah. But you could roll yourself up in one and I could be like a pig in a blanket and just eat my way out. <laughs> I'm not, I'm failing to see the downside here. <laughs> what weird thing would you normalize if you could? Wow. There's a tough one. That is a tough one. Um, I was going to go with putting weird stuff in ice cream, right? So this sounds weird, but like go cho- on. chocolate ice cream and meatloaf. <sighs> You're like, what? I used to work at old country buffet. And okay. If anybody, if I was it, like, if, yeah. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. If anybody's watching this, like in the future, post COVID, um, buffets used to be this magical place you could go to and just like do anything with food. It's great. Do anything with food. And probably the biggest loss of COVID. But yeah, so I would put uh, chunks of meatloaf into a thing of chocolate ice cream and mix it together. And it was literally like magic. But I think people need to get over all this weird. Uh, Food stuff. And the other thing that I think of... Yeah, no food shaming. Were you yeah, exactly. pregnant? Unless it's ranch. <laughs> I was, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, that comes from... I, I really enjoy uh, crunchy Cheetos dipped in, like, Wendy's Frosties. Yeah. that's but Yes. Yep. Yeah. Or just French fries. Or just their the fries. fries. Yeah, frosty and fries. Yeah, it's good. But the crunchy really Cheeto, you get that, like, salty, but you also get that cheesy. You can't have a uh, like meatloaf, chocolate. I like... Uh, Baby dills. That's going to be on the special next. Wrapped yeah. in ham with peanut butter spread on them. Oh, I'm into that. That's super good. Yeah. I don't do pickles, oh. but I feel like if I did pickles, I'd eat that. Yeah. My mom used to take Ritz crackers and peanut butter and then put tuna fish on them. Peanut and butter good. and tuna fish. What are you yeah. used to? Didn't you, didn't that you just, just sounds that, like, like a really bad joke. I feel like I did. Waiting to happen. Funny, and <laughs> so I, you shamed you me still, about it. Yeah, no food shaming. It. This is a safe space. But the Ritz other... crackers, peanut butter, and then, and yeah, then you tuna just fish. drain tuna fish. You yeah. don't like mix with mayonnaise or anything. Because the tuna salad is the peanut butter. Yeah. So Home Wrecker in the chat brought up something really interesting. The first time I had mashed potatoes as a pizza topping was magic. Wow. Um, so 
I want to do it. I, I, I wanted to do it this year. Unfortunately, Thanksgiving is also probably canceled. Uh, but I did want to do a full Thanksgiving pizza at some point in time. So kind of like a layer of mashed potatoes, like some nice gravies, put some turkey on there. Yeah. yeah so you got cranberry the, you sauce. Got your crust. Yeah. Cranberry sauce. Yeah. There's the sauce. As a pizza. That'd be, um, that'd be great. Right. I'm I into made that. really good cranberry sauce last why, year. Why, why like can't we do that? Get. Just the entire week leading I guess up we to Thanksgiving. we technically could because... Totally. Yeah, that that still may happen. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's a great do, like, idea. A breakfast pizza for Super Bowl. Oh yeah, since it's a little bit earlier. I would in the love day, to. Like a breakfast pizza, or almost a Thanksgiving breakfast quiche pizza so without good, the eggs. Though. Oh yeah, maybe kind of a Thanksgiving shepherd's pie. Yeah, Ooh, there you go. Yeah. That yeah. Might... The other thing though, I was thinking of to normalize, and this like this always sounds like a, my little pitch on this starts off a little abrasive, but. You know, 100 some odd years ago, women fought really, really hard for the right to vote. Right. And they fought hard for the right to wear pants. Like, that's a thing. Right. You I love wear... pants, so I'm glad they did that. Well, I think the wrong, the, the fight that should have been was men to wear dresses and skirts. Normalize that. Because they're awesome. Right. We're almost to that point. As, as someone who frequently wears rompers and leggings, like, yeah, yeah I'm for it's it. It's great. Or wear purses, right? Not a, not, a, not a satchel or a man bag, but a purse. I actually have two handbags. That I, I use, they're so great because like you don't worry about your pockets. You just have everything you need right there. That's ah yeah. So I got in the rompers. That we're we're gonna go down a, romp, a romper train now. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're comfy, y'all. If y'all haven't if y'all haven't figured out the beauty and comfort of rompers. Um, Does anybody need anything to drink? I'm good. Oh, I'm well, good. Caitlin's doing drinks. Thank you. No, I've I've still got my cup of delicious Madhouse coffee here. All right. How are you drinking more coffee? <laughs> I don't know. Attack. I was going to say. Heart attack number two. All right. I'm going to go make a cocktail. I feel bad Let's for you. See. I've had so much coffee. I'm going to be awake for hours. You know, I completely lost my what I was going to do, actually. Rompers. I had a oh, rompers? rompers? Yeah. Yeah. Rompers and dresses and... Rompers are comfy. Dresses, yeah, I can attest to, are also comfy. Um... Well, we had a... We kind of had a, a makeshift Halloween. We canceled Halloween, but we still had... We were still open yesterday. Um... And my entire crew decided to dress as me... <laughs> Uh, in in clothes from vault31store.com. That's great. But it was weird. That was a weird day. Uh, I lost what I was doing. So you know what? Let's see. How <laughs> no. how would the world change if animals could talk? So we'd all be vegans. We would be vegans. Period. I, yeah. I, I, and, and that's 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 huge, right? Because immediate, oh my God! And as I think about this, um, our climate would be better because we'd start using land instead of for cattle. We'd use it for like you know good uh, for plants and things that would clean up the plants, atmosphere. Et cetera, right? We'd be better humans because um, we'd get told on for a lot. of... I mean, really, you think about it. How many crimes are witnessed by animals? Probably a lot of them. Oh, you think they would snitch? Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah, some would. Because we think that the snitches would. get stitches, the but they have snitch. teeth and claws. Oh, yes. <laughs> Our cats, at least, would snitch. Yeah, cats would because cats don't. They hate us. It, it it'd be a weird thing to think about um, walking around as a species with another species that talk. Considering we're the only ones, it would be. I mean, we we watch uh, sci-fi, Star Trek, things like that, where there there are these massive species everywhere, and they can all communicate. And that would be that would be awesome. I would love. I would just love that. I've got a buddy. Uh, a buddy on Twitter. His name is Tupa. Tupac. Tupac. Yep. I love it. Um, he's great. He's a great writer, and he's actually writing a novel set up in Canada about that, where an animals got the ability to talk, and then there's um, humans that be get the ability to shift into animals and back, and kind of a blend of the species, but not like in a reproductive way necessarily. But it's really a lot of it's about what happens when you can communicate with animals. Neat. Yeah. Well, I just, uh, as you were saying, that was browsing around to... Uh, at Vault? At, uh, what is it? Vault31store.com. Vault yeah. we, we are launching our store. We got some really, really rad items in there. So, shameless plug. Just because my first one failed so miserably. Including Cookie McCake Face uh, merchandise. We do have new Cookie McCake Face merchandise. That's great. Check out these awesome shirts. Yeah. That's so cute. Yeah, it's super rad. Did you hire the model, or is it like just like a, <laughs> no? Uh, he's a good-looking guy. So, if you're not familiar with Cookie McCake <laughs> yes. Face, it is a cookie company basically within Vault 31. My sister runs it. Uh, she's been doing a phenomenal job making some really, really cool cookie creations. Uh, but we're we're trying to come up with um, cookie personas for each one of the flavors. 
And so she kind of farmed out a bunch of artwork to all these various artists and, uh, uh, some local people that we know basically returned a couple of them. That was one of them cookie. And we've got some others that are be showing up, but, uh, eventually we'll have shirts of all the cookies of their different personas. And it's going to be really, really neat when all those all get out. Let's bring up, do I got, do I got any more? Oh gosh. Yeah, you got a lot on here. Some of them are good. <laughs> a lot of them are good. Like you're at Comic-Con with cosplay. So realistic. It's freaking people out. What are people calling you? They would call me Captain uh, Captain Kirk. I knew that was going to be a Star Trek plug. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I always wanted to be Captain Kirk, but, like, I've, I'm more of a Mr. Spock. It's just how I am. But, like, I mean, right. I, even, I, I, even, I even have the rank for Kirk. Like, I'm, I'm built for him. But uh, if but, you couldn't be Kirk, put, put that up you there. couldn't put that be something Star Trek related. Yep. What's Did not have to be? Think outside your box, Jeff. Wow. What's not okay. Star Trek related? <laughs> Well, okay. Well, I was going to go somewhere, but that's still inside my box. Commander, <laughs> Commander Shepard. But let's go way outside. Right? Oh, you know, um, I, I, um, oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember what they're called in Doctor Who. The, the guys who wear the skin and have the farty noise. Oh crap. Oh, I feel like an idiot. I can't. So remember do I. The... Uh, Sarah, are you still in chat? <laughs> yeah, we, we need an expert. Save us. The farty I feel like noise. I should know this, and I am just drawing a blank. <laughs> Help us out. That would be a great one. Because really, I could just look like this. And yeah. just fart all the time. You just have to make farting just, noises. Yeah. <laughs> so nothing different. So speaking of normalizing things, right? It's like, yeah, this is what I do. Oh, can race. we just normalize farts? <laughs> can that just be okay? I don't know if Sarah's still in, but we also have a delay between what we say in chat. No, sorry guys, we're not open. We're not open. <laughs> oh, oh, are they coming at the door? I can see them oh, in the sucks. Oh, darn, darn it. Oh, darn it. I know. Darn it. We're not open Sundays. <laughs> All right, well, thanks everyone for joining us uh, again. We just became Twitch affiliated. Yeah, woo. So thank you for the subscriptions. Thank you for the bits. Thank you for all that coming in. Uh, normalized farts. Yes, yes Quinn. Quinn. Oh, Thanks, so Quinn. Glad. I love it. So there glad we go. you're in the chat, After Quinn. all that, that's, that's the... Ken to the rescue. Uh, can, we, can we see if hashtag normalized farts is trending? <laughs> I, think we, I think we could get that done. I think <laughs> we, we should. Make, that make it someone with, with the Twitters, make it start trending or whatever. I don't know how that works. Well, I'm going to go on right now at Jeff T. Aiken. Right. Oh, what's this one here? Oh doing some research oh wow i so um i don't know if anybody can see this but here's a great shot of david oh no <laughs> oh dressing up as gene mayner that's not the best little shot there but yeah it's fun <laughs> halloween halloween moment there from a while ago yeah so i did i did dress as my old boss at one point in time so now i get it now i just realized because my entire team dressed as me yesterday to surprise me <laughs> it all comes around yeah you still hate us right we're still all fired <laughs> Uh, actually, the really funny thing about that, so Gene Maynard is a, a wonderful individual, but um, when we were still together at Structured, um, on that day, this was, oh God, seven, eight years ago at this point in time, something like that, <laughs> uh, but I, I did dress as him, and he didn't understand it at first. It was a little weird because uh, of how I was dressing up, because it was a little bit out of character for what I normally do, uh, and so Gene would sit at his desk, and mine was very close to him, so it was just across, and we were we were having our, our normal morning conversation uh, and I, I was doing everything I could to mimic what Gene was doing. And it took him so long to kind of get this. I could see that like something in his head realized that like something's weird and different, but he didn't want to call it out, which is very weird for Gene not to call something out directly yeah. in front of him. But I did think he kind of realized what was going on. Uh, but he would sit down and he, he'd open up his lunch pack uh, box that he always has. And he'd pull out an apple that he saran wraps. And I had the exact same thing. So right as he's doing this, I'm pulling out mine, just looking him dead in the eyes. Uh, and then Gene... Uh, j uh, and, it, it's so great to see this guy laugh and have uh, just a more humbling smile. But he, he realized that I was him at that time and that the whole day was super, super fun to see him, see him light up like that. Uh, but the realization in his face like slowly went from like his, his super serious gene face to like just laughter. It was great. I feel bad because there's like you, me and Giselle in here who were like, yeah, we get it. Cause we know gene. And like, that's that. Yeah. The Saran wrap apple. No joke. Like, yeah. What was that website for merch? Quinn's asking. If you go to vault31store.com, you can see our merch store. What was that again? Vault31store.com. 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 Vault. Vault31store. Vault31store.com. Dot com, not dot gov. Dot com. And not net, not dot net because it's like a legitimate website. What about dot edu? <laughs> I'm paying for it. <laughs> 
It's not like a vault 31 store dot weebly dot squarespace dot com. No, it's legit. <laughs> vault 31 store dot com. Uh, also, speaking of plugs, let me let me roll this here. So we do have this episode sponsored by Madhouse Coffee Co. Thank you guys so much for sending this away or sending this to us. Uh, we had a mixology segment earlier in case you guys missed it, missed it, where we mixed a bunch of cocktails with our coffee. Um, of course, we record all of our episodes. This will go up on YouTube eventually. We'll probably cut it up and make some really rad clips because, of course, we had technical difficulties and things went wrong because what vault or what a wasteland show would it be if we didn't have issues? Um, but Madhouse Coffee, this place is rad. So they started in September of 2019. Uh, and their, their startup story doesn't have a lot to do with that other than just people with passion. And, and that's kind of what it takes. Uh, you have an individual who left her job at Black Rock Coffee and started her own coffee company and is just nailing it. And it's so great to have a local coffee house. Um, and when I say coffee house, I mean an actual coffee house, right? There's no drive through or anything like that. You go in there and you have to sit down and actually enjoy your cup of coffee. And it's great. Sure, you can get it to go. Um, but then you'd be missing all the great aesthetic of the shop, which is this really, really cool uh, from the looking glass uh, Alice in Wonderland theme. And it's awesome. This place is super, super cool. So if you guys are in the Vancouver area, uh, definitely check them out. Definitely get some coffee from them. They're also on Grubhub as well. So if you don't feel like leaving your house during these times, you can safely get it delivered uh, from Grubhub. And I highly suggest you guys take some time and do that because they're rock and roll. Yeah, they're awesome. Let me do a little read from their website because I love this little line here. It says, uh, as a company, we hope to blossom and promote inclusiveness within the community by providing a safe space for anyone to come and hang out, study, or do whatever makes you happy. Here at Madhouse, we support the art of making mistakes and learning from them. How awesome is that? This is a great, this is a great sponsor. Thank you, Madhouse. I'm excited to be on an episode that's sponsored by them. And we've gotten to try them out. There's a little bit there. Yeah, they sent us some rad coffee. They, we got some cold brew from them. We got some cool little trinkets. Uh, it's been fun. It's been great to do coffee cocktails on our third episode. I, I, I didn't think we'd uh, we'd get there. Um, but I also want to say we did what seven? How many did we do? A lot. We a did. Lot. We did almost ten cocktails. I think. I think it was ten. Not actually. one of them was pumpkin spiced. <laughs> we we did it. Or I we, really wanted we to do didn't a gingerbread do one, but I I thought about doing a gingerbread one. I was really trying to avoid Christmassy things. Um, yeah, yeah, I still did peppermint. Bite. Still did peppermint. I did a cinnamon one. Like it's kind of hard to do, uh, but yeah, we we went. We didn't do a pumpkin spice one <laughs> intentionally, which is too bad because, God, I, pumpkin spice is awesome. Yeah, but they've ruined it. Like it's, it's uh just... become too normalized. Yeah, if you will. I think that pumpkin spice, when done correctly, can be really artful. There is a cocktail that I really wanted to do that is pumpkin spice yeah. forward. Um, but I bit my tongue and I resisted the urge and uh, I might make you guys try one later because why not? Why not? Why not? It better not be with that pumpkin vodka I brought. Oh God, no! It would be with <laughs> cracking no in your pumpkin sauce that you made. Uh, I don't. I don't trust any bottle under ten dollars, oh, and these yeah. bottles were under ten dollars. But I, you know what? We're gonna experiment, and that's technically what we we usually do during off hours is try to experiment <laughs> with some fun stuff. Oh, that Science. reminds me. I gotta check my infusions. <laughs> oh yeah. So I I did. Um, I had a couple infusions. We started doing, or we're, we're starting to do, um, clear spirit infusions. So we got a couple rums. We're going to be doing some vodkas. I did a pepper and a rum. Uh, what am I doing? A pepper rum and a clove rum. And I wanted to do the clove rum for today. Um, it's a little too clovey. I think I left them in there a little bit too long, or maybe I I had too many. But I'll I'll uh, get that perfected eventually. Um, but yeah, we're experimenting with clear spirit infusions, and so far so good. Caitlin's got some really rad ideas coming up, so stay it's tuned. Really stay tuned fun. for those. Sounds fun. So I'm looking at your website here, Jeff. Yeah, jeffaken.com. Uh, yeah, you do. You're a busy man. So <laughs> two years ago, when I was 30 years old. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. That's somebody yeah earlier 2020 but i got i got mono when i was 30 oh wow and uh mono sucks like that was awful i would say the better part of 11 months i spent pretty much in bed um and i came out of that really believing and understanding how we have a limited time on this planet and so i'm gonna do everything i can do while i can do it and you know, so I've got a full-time, more than a full-time job with the government. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love my job. I get to do really great things 
with it, but I want to do I want to do more. When I I worked in pro wrestling for a long time, I wrestled for like a minute. I am I am not athletic enough to do what those amazing athletes do, but I can talk, and so I ended up doing commentary and play by play. And through that, I landed in the world of voiceover because we'd have sponsors that would do a commercial, need somebody to do a cheap VO, and that was me. And then I started doing real VO, and it turns out those aren't cheap. They actually pay actually pay pretty well. Yes. Um, yeah, when you, when you have the right equipment, you know how to do the editing and things like that. Um, so fell into that. And then, again, through work and being able to talk, um, I started doing uh, speaking engagements. So I'll do educational speaking, motivational speaking, things like that. Um, I've spoken for a lot of organizations recently in this area uh, for Clark County. Uh, Clark County runs a Tech Fest every year where all their IT groups get together. And so oh, I, not know about I spoke that. at Tech Fest, I think, two or three years ago um, up here in, the Van- in Vancouver, which is pretty cool. Yeah, um, was it near Tech Center Drive, kind of just east of here? Yeah, yeah, just a little, just a little How did I not there. know yeah. about that? Yeah. But uh, yeah, they do some really cool stuff in, in there. But I got to do uh, a lot of that. And so, you know, just looking for those opportunities to. To, to speak and, and my wife and I through our company uh, the Aiken Collective and not collective like in cool soaps and sharing stuff but like the Borg um, <laughs> what we do but uh, through that with the pandemic we started hosting um, online conventions right because in the world of IT that's how apparently work happens people spend thousands of dollars to go to conferences and conventions and organizations spend sometimes millions of dollars and well, we can do it for you for a couple grand, save you a lot, make us a little bit of money. But that's given me an opportunity to adapt a lot of my speaking to online. So I'm really used to doing this, right? Looking at a camera and pretending I'm talking to a whole group of people out there. Um, but yeah, mostly motivational stuff, leadership stuff. It all weaves together, right, to uh, to like the Starfleet Leadership Academy and the podcast work I do. But, but the voiceover stuff is cool because I get to do a little bit of everything, you know, whatever comes my way sort of stuff. Any big projects in the pipe? Nothing right now, unfortunately. I'm working with a new acting coach and hoping that can open up some uh, some some stuff for me. I would love to get into video games or animation. I was going to uh, say, I'd be rather do some video game voiceovers if yeah. you ever got into that realm. Um, we, there, there are a couple design studios around the area that are popping up. Uh, not necessarily like Kickstarter level, but um, uh, just various design groups. And one uh, of the videographers, a good buddy of mine, one that actually shot an introduction like when we started the bar yeah um is getting into like game stuff as well it, it's cool to see it's cool to see like all these various pieces kind of come together in in a small world moment yeah they uh, all do they end up you know coalescing and doing really neat stuff and up kind of back on the board thing yeah yeah and i think it's neat too as one is technology has kind of caught up with create with creatives but also really frankly because of covid a lot of people are home people are consuming a lot more online and so those opportunities are huge and um, I just think it'd be fun to do video. What's funny is like I have a demo, you know, a voiceover demo up on my website, but I, I, I've been working with my acting coach to put together a video game demo and uh, to do that at stuff like, uh, so like a normal demo or things like uh, the Apple watch series four brings together great, you know, it's like putting together an ad or something like that. But right. for a video game, it's things like, Ugh! Ugh! <laughs> I'm coming after you. You know, it's just these ridiculous, like, you don't think about those noises in games, but that's so much of a video game. (laughs) Are those effects? Yeah. Uh, Same with, uh, oh, uh, brain uh, brain fart moment. Uh, Moving on. (laughs) Oh, sound effects, like for movies and TV shows. Yeah, well. Where they take, like, coconuts and. Yeah, the Foley Foley stuff they do. Or, like. uh, but the thing is, like, the sound you hear is never what you think it is. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm sure it's like that for things on Star Trek and also Star Wars. Like, the lightsaber uh, was, um, like, those rain sound tubes that somebody would pluck, mm-hmm. and then they just yeah. slowed it down. Uh, but Well, one of my favorite factoids, like, with, like, video game sound effects especially is with the new Halo that's coming out, um, a bunch of the alien noises were made by one of the developer's pugs. <laughs> they just followed this pug around and like recorded it grunting and making breathing noises. It's a pug, and... so it's just trying to get air in its body. Exactly. <laughs> Please let me breathe. And so it's like, I, apparently, that's uh, one of the big aliens in the new Halo that's coming out. That's awesome. Uh, it's Chrissy. pretty adorable if you look at the design studio's Instagram. Like they have videos of them like, like following the pug around with a mic. <laughs> 
Chrissy pointed out one of the questions I have on here. Uh, if you could be invisible but fart loudly every few seconds, how would you use that? So I would go to um, I'm newscasters. I'm concerned you immediately have an answer. Yeah, go, I'd go to newscasters. <laughs> oh. and, uh, and then like to the, like the White House, you know, for anything. And just be like. Yeah, why not? This, this pandemic's very. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. I would, I would get on the. I would get. I would get on the air. Good. As much as I on the air. Uh, I'm also seeing this one, which may be kind of interesting. If you could design a prison planet for crooked politicians, what would it look like? Uh, it would just show happy movies. Yeah. No, it would be um, that episode of Futurama where like John Smithson and Smith Johnson are running against each other. And it would just be a constant election cycle with no actual election. Oh, gosh. Kind of a Groundhog Day scenario. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Nobody wants that. That's that sounds good. terrible. That's good. Yeah, because campaigning, be campaigning sucks. It's not fun. Uh, is there, is there any, any sunny days for campaigning? Any, you know, uh, there's some. I would I, imagine there's got to be some light. I got to um, – so in Oregon City – so a lot of people don't know this. Oregon City, which is if you ever played the Oregon Trail, right, that super cool game, when you win the game is when you get to Oregon City, literally. We have the end of the Oregon Trail there where, where the Clackamas and Willamette Rivers meet. But we have this really great stretch of land that was a paper mill for a long time that we're going to convert into a river walk um, that's going to not only be a cool like downtown-y sort of thing, but it's also going to highlight the indigenous cultures that were in there before we basically came and murdered them and enslaved them and kicked them out um, of their land. But we're going to build that in a way to, to highlight and educate people around that. But right now, it's just like this desolate industrial wasteland. And I got to go tour that. And I got to talk to the Willamette Falls Trust people that are doing the fundraising Neat. to be able to make it happen. It was just like, this is, this is awesome. Like, this is a thing, literally, that when it's done, and phase one will be done here in a couple of years, but the, full, the fullness of the whole project is going to take more than a generation. Like, this is a massive undertaking. But it's going to turn that spot in Oregon City into an international travel destination um, just because of the history and the heritage that's there. It's literally the birthplace of Western America. Uh, yes. Um, so my father and I used to volunteer at the Brigade Encampment at Fort Vancouver, which is one of the tail end uh, stops at the Oregon Trail. Uh, shout out to the Hudson Bay Company. Um, but... That's a, that's a fascinating world. If you guys have time, go down that rabbit hole and just learn about the Oregon Trail. Learn about uh, Fort Vancouver. It's an awesome piece of history. Yeah. Yeah, it's really neat. I think, and it's a thing that I think gets kind of snowed over, right? Because the Oregon Trail was a thing, and then it was a video game. But it's like there's actual, there's actual stuff. There's lots of stuff. Yeah. Not all of it was good. A lot of it was really, really bad. A lot of it was really terrible. A lot of but it was I think, mostly you know, terrible. One of the things that the Willamette Falls Trust group talked about when we were, I was on the tour was, like, it's not good, but it is. You know, it is. And so we have 12,000 years of indigenous culture's history. And then we have a moment where we Western colonizers came in and committed genocide and did horrible things. But then, like, we had a history after that. And so it's really part of this all encompassing history of all of ours together with a dark spot in the middle. And if we can acknowledge that and work through it together, then we can build a culture together moving forward. Um, and it's really a great thing. Kennedy Quinn in there. Yeah. So they, they, they there is a new er Oregon trail game. That's very, uh, so it's very Portland oriented. They made a Portland Oregon yeah. Trail one, yeah. Like you have to buy how many lattes do you want? You're Your wagon's a kombucha. Subaru. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> but, but I think what you're thinking, though, would be a blast. In 4K? I don't yeah, think I totally. want the Oregon Trail in 4K. Um, but I was going to say, uh, fun fun video game knowledge. Uh, the original Oregon Trail, actually several, several reiterations of the Oregon Trail up to a certain point, um, was based... The, the, the time, because uh, RTCs didn't exist back then, real-time clocks and computers, uh, and so the time was based off of your actual CPU cycle. And so the faster computer you had, the faster the game would run. Um, huh. And when the game was originally, was, was originally released, it wasn't that big of a problem, but people continued to play the game through upgrades and various cycles, and as DOS improved and all that, um, the game got faster and faster and faster to the point where you would go hunting, and rabbits would just zing by the screen, and you could not do anything about it. Uh, and then the real time clock was invented. And I don't think we, I think if we could really show the, like right now dysentery is a funny joke, but if we could show it, 
<laughs> I really I'll should be a lot of laughing. <laughs> uh, Especially in 4K. Every day. Oh, God. Dysentery in 4K would be terrible. No, yeah. let's leave it at that. Ooh. And moving on to the next question. <laughs> yeah, right. I just see another fun one. Every day. Ten Why is it always Ken Quinnity? Why is it always Ken Quinnity? I don't know. He always, it's always towards the end of the stream. <laughs> Quinn pops on. Drops a mic. Like, boom, this is it. <laughs> Done. And it's not even just on stream. Sometimes he just comes into the bar and he'll ask the weirdest question. We miss your face, Quinn, by the way. Only part of your face, though. I still need a wellness check. A wellness check? Yeah. Yeah, I can don't we, actually know that he's alive. Can we get proof of life? Can you send us a photo? Send Caitlin a photo. We need. <laughs> Back to this. Every day, 10 things appear in your backyard. If all of them had to start with the same letter, what would that letter be? That's so, another thinker. Yeah, so my initial thought is P. So that's what I was going to, because pizza? Exactly. Yep. But I'm pizza. worried about all the other things to potentially start with P. Pie. Porsche. Um... Pygmy oh. goats? Yeah, pygmy goats. That'd be great. Keep the yard clean. <laughs> yeah, free lawnmower. And adorable. Right? Yeah. Pork. And- pork, oh, pork. Pork rinds. I'm Ooh. thinking on food, though. There's going to be some other stuff, though. It's not so great. Play-Doh? I mean, Play-Doh's fun. Just love well, someone's going to say it. Like, there's also pornography. There's that. There's some <laughs> things There's some things in that, um, we'll say, genre that may or may not be negatives to have sometimes. Yeah, that's a solid one. Yeah. That could go, yeah, that'd go pee. It's weird that like I immediately thought that, but you and I, right? We're we're on the pizza kick. Well, that's kind of kind of where I was leaning. Yeah. Nothing nothing goes wrong with that. However, the question doesn't say you can't choose it. So I'm worried about the terrible things that start with P. Pandemic, of course, comes. To well, mind. there's that. And hey, there Porky it is. Porcupines. Porcupines are great. No, they can like shoot their quilt, but okay. they're also well, adorable. They're super cute. Aggravate them. One yeah, of, but you wouldn't be able to go out in your backyard. Send the pygmy goats after the porcupine. Oh, but one of my that. favorite things well, during this pandemic, especially during lockdown, when the Oregon Zoo was shut down. The zookeepers would take the porcupines out on walks around the zoo to visit the other animals, and they would post videos of it online. Really? And it was adorable. Yeah, I take it back. I, I would go for a porcupine because I remember those videos, and they're so freaking cute. They're like, so looking, cute. Oh, and penguins. They would go to visit the penguins. Yeah. Ah, I and they, it. like, cool? porcupines walk like corgis. They have that, like, little, little wiggly more. butt. Yeah. I really don't see a downside to the pee. I think... <laughs> I think P it's the is, perfect letter. It's the it perfect is. letter. Everything's good. But I mean, if we're going with the bad side of P's, you've got your politicians. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, being a, a quasi politician yourself, like oh, they're terrible. Be... You should. You should. So my my boss is a behavioral health professional by trade, which is interesting, right? When that's your boss. But uh, he showed me a study that said that if uh, they got if they cured narcissism, like got rid of narcissism. We would have like eighty five percent all eighty five percent of all politicians would disappear. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. That's yeah. disturbing. They yeah. into a mass well, extinction, yeah. Yeah. And maybe that's not so bad. I'll just say that. <laughs> maybe not. We got a travel question. If you could teleport to any place on earth, where would that or where would you go first? Kind of a so kind of fun uh, one. Uh, Basically where do you want to go? Another yeah, another way to answer and asking that question is hey, if we weren't in lockdown, where would you go, right? Yeah. So here's the pathetic thing about me. I'd stay home. I would teleport home um, and just like play video games or something and be left alone for a while. Because <laughs> you what can. I, what, I've learned about, what I've learned about myself in these quarantine times, it's not really a quarantine, but it's a quarantine. Um, yeah, I'm totally good just like being alone. And, uh, and I've been all over the world, right? Like I've traveled the world both as just a tourist and pro wrestling and music. And I found out that like every place sucks, um, <laughs> but every place, but every place is also great. It's just, you know, so like, I'm good where I'm at really like, yeah, that's fair. That's a lame answer to that question. It, it, it's, it's really not, uh, it, it's actually kind of, con- I wouldn't say concerning, but I, as an introvert, yeah, I'm becoming more worried that people are realizing how awesome it is just staying home and not worrying cool. about people or not being bothered by people. Um, and we're seeing the shift, of course, of how everything works. We got Zoom meetings and everything's virtual and far away. Um, it's awesome. Like, do I am I the only one that kind of thinks like no. this is the awesome like, I, way to be? If I wasn't married, if I didn't have an amazing <laughs> child, and I was in this lockdown by myself, I would be at least as happy as I am now. Yeah. It's, it's not possible for me to be happier because I'm married to the most amazing person in the world. But, I mean, if it was possible to be happier, it would be that 
in this lockdown situation. Or uh, as Quinn says, having the quarantine time of his life. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I, the quarantine time of my life. If we could, if we could lift travel and, and be able to go, uh, the the number one place on my list, and I always bring this up, is I want to go to Dubai so badly. Yeah. Ideally, uh, or specifically, I should say, um, those Palm Islands, those man-made, engineered oh, yeah. Palm Islands, and they're just. I'm so fascinated by these things. I'm so fascinated that man, humans, built an island, a synthetic island off the coast of Dubai. So uh, I, and not just one. Uh, they've, they've, there's like dozens at yeah. this point, it feels like. There's a big Palm Island, then they made a bigger one, and then there's a bunch of other little islands. Um, there's a couple documentaries online. If you guys haven't heard about the Palm Islands in Dubai, watch it. It's fascinating, the engineering that goes on to this thing. It's absolutely fascinating. Uh, but I want to stand on those things. I just want to stand on it and just... It's just cool. It's really cool how they did this. You know what they don't tell you about Dubai, though? Is it is a thousand degrees. Oh, and that would be my kid tonight. I don't do heat very well. Like, so when I was in, I was only there for a while when I was in Dubai, but I just remember feeling gross. And maybe that's just like my North American climate setup or whatever, but like, <laughs> yeah, it was, I did not, it was just, it just felt gross. Yeah, we don't handle heat very well no, up here. And that, and and that's it gets a, above 70 and people start losing their minds. Yeah, and that's a different level. Like, like that's like, magnifying glass of the sun right on you kind of heat there. well i think it's also just that difference of us being from the pacific northwest and like if i go anywhere where it gets above 70 whether it's los angeles phoenix or dubai i'm immediately dying yeah <laughs> like yeah, i just want to lay like down cold. on a rock take off and just like melt uh, I'm melting in this sweatshirt I got from vault31store.com. You're leaning the wrong way. Am I? <laughs> you still see it, though. <laughs> that way. Yeah, I remember when I was in Lebanon, uh, my wife, her family is from the Beirut area there, and we spent a good chunk of time there a few years ago. And, like, it's just and, – and it's, it's – like, there, Dubai is, like, a whole different level of wealth, <laughs> right, for a lot of people. Lebanon, not so much. Um, and so like, they don't have air conditioning and when they do, it's spotty and stuff. And yeah, there's just, there's no escape from that heat that's there. Oh yeah. No, thanks. No, thanks. I feel like if I'm reading some of these questions here, if you could just create your own reality TV show, what would it be like? It would just be, I think I feel like it would just be Jeff. Yeah, totally. Life's already interesting enough. You've got a lot going on. So it's what I love about that though. I was, I was driving my daughter home the other day. Oh, Ireland, Quinn. Yes, Ireland's I a good would one. Love to go to Ireland. Uh, be been there. It's amazing. Yeah, uh, it's it's Ireland is so shockingly like Portland. It's 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 weird. It, it, Gray and mildly depressing. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean everything about it's the same. If if you were to get off the plane and essentially walk into one of any any one of the cities in Ireland. Um, and just take photos. It looks so shockingly like Portland, except everyone, you can't understand what the hell they're saying. Uh, it, thick Irish accents half the time, but it's, it's such a fun place. Everybody there is amazing. Uh, go, if, go Quinn. Yeah. I think we all <laughs> need to. That's, a, that's my take. When this pandemic lifts, make, make an effort. I would love to go to Ireland. It's definitely on my bucket list. And then, um, I also really want to go see the painted, or the painted cathedrals in Bukovina in Romania. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like, Romania's, it's been a Romania's dream of mine for yeah. so long. Uh, remember traveling? You guys remember traveling? Yeah, right. I mean, someday I'd just like to go back to Disneyland. But yeah. Oh, I want to go to Disneyland. It Shut just feels up. so far away. Ah. You stole my vacation, Kate. Ugh, like four times you went to Disneyland. We couldn't go once. Oh. I gave you plenty of opportunity. Name, I tried name to three. push you to go. <laughs> name one. I, I have physically had to remove you from this building. Uh, not you didn't remove me to Disneyland. I you're the one that doesn't go. That I can't just. You cannot up. blame me. Apparently, we had kind of planned like a month for Disneyland, and then didn't tell any of the employees, and then everybody requested time off, oh. and then David and I didn't go to Disneyland. That's not good. Yeah, that's not my fault. It's not really that Kate stole it, but she did steal Disneyland. Forever. Well, Disneyland, mm-hmm. you, it, it's such a, it, it truly is a magical yes. place. Yes, I'm a Disney kid. I'm 34. I love Disney. Love everything about it. Uh, I think we all are. I think we all are. Yeah, I feel like if someone place. doesn't love Disney yeah. in some capacity, they've they given just, up their. Soul. They can bibbity boppy the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, on the reality show thing, it's so funny because I was driving my daughter somewhere or from somewhere. She takes an Aikido class, and so we're back and <laughs> forth with that. It's like her little touch of reality with people that she gets right now. Quinn, yes. 
But she told me that uh, she says, uh, she goes, you and mommy are zero cool. You have zero <laughs> cool. Yeah. That, oh, it stings. And, I, and, sting. I, and all I said to her is I'm just like, you know, in a couple of years, you're going to grow up a little bit. You're going to meet some other parents and you're going to realize just how wrong you are. Like, but that's fine. You can think we're zero cool. That's zero fine. Fahrenheit or zero Celsius. Exactly. Mm. So, <laughs> which Calvin. one's colder? Yeah. Uh, Quinn, you are absolutely able to ask Mr. Jeff a question. Please do. Uh, before I go on a metric versus imperial tangent again. No, we'll, we'll do I'm it. really good at those. I feel like that needs to just be a segment on every show. <laughs> oh my gosh, can we have a metric segment? No! No one would watch a metric segment. Well, well, I'd be the hard, only one like overly excited about how metric was still Well, like, I'm going to take the imperial position because it's a challenge, but yeah. Oh, okay. It's, Are we going to debate? It is dumb that we're not using the metrics. Okay, stuff. never mind. We just, yeah. I, I guess I just want like, to I'm debate. on board, but I'll take the position. <laughs> I don't ask know anything, ask. Quinn. Don't ask. ask okay. Our little <laughs> rules. He just wanted to know that he could ask right, the question. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> sure come on. Quinn just cool. wants to know if he can. Well, oh, I, guess, I guess he did ask, right? Am I allowed to ask? Yes. Yes. I answered your question. Look at that. There you well go. done. <laughs> uh, but yeah, back on. Now and now we're going to go down the metric rabbit hole. So yeah, so we do have a, uh, a list of rules at the beginning of our bar that we make everybody read when they come in because it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's important to us. Um, but it does say to keep a distance of two meters, which happens yep, to be that. a little over six feet. It's about six and a half feet. Um, but then there's a little, <laughs> a little flavor text that just says learn the metric system. And so many people have commented on that. Uh, but uh, that's what I tell everybody. You don't know what to do during these times in your home all the time. Just learn the metric system. It, it's an awesome, awesome tool to have. Well, I think the one thing I wish that metric would solve is time. Because I was thinking about this, you know, quarter hour. Mm -hmm. Quarter hour is 15 minutes. What? Yeah, it goes oh. back to the minute 60 seconds, yep. and that doesn't make sense. Why not yeah, make it 100? Like, that? yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I think, and I, please tell me if anybody's watching if I'm wrong, but I think some of it actually came from early Indian um, uh, math. So in India, India is the first culture so long ago that used the number zero. And they did a lot to help develop our, our numeric systems. But I think they worked in base six for a bear, like for thousands of years. So I think a lot of our time is based on, and I could be Off making that. that up to be I honest. I would blame the Greek, but, but yeah. I don't know enough about that history to. Well, it's probably someone that's not from here because <laughs> we did nothing. It came to inventing measurements. No, but, but yeah. learn the metric system. It's phenomenal. It took me a while to make it. I mean, that's back on the questions I asked earlier. What would you normalize? I would normalize the metric system. Um, but I is. still go with normalized farts. Yeah. Hey, I'm fine with normalizing and farts. And that's getting some that's play a start. on. That's getting some play on Twitter right now. Just oh, I like, can't wait for that to trend. I put it on at Jeff T Aiken. Get a little bit of play. <laughs> Not much. Nice <laughs> farts. Oh, uh, should we get in the superhero territory? Let's go. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> if you were if you were a famous superhero, what would be worse? Being stuck with a terrible superhero name. Uh, or having to dodge lovesick fans at every rescue scene. The superhero name. So, uh, yeah, because I guess it would be kind of humbling always having fans at rescue scenes, but then you'd have, you know, the invisible fart as your name. That, I mean, that's <laughs> going to follow you everywhere. If you were on Instagram, if you whatever, you've got this lame name all the time that, that never leaves you. I'm trying to, like, there, there's some of them that are out there, right? And I, I'm trying to think of them off the top of my head. Ant-Man comes to mind. Um, crazy quilt, condiment. I was gonna say we have a. We can thank DC for most of the really yeah, terrible. We got the superhero nerd behind us. Kate is big time into that. So I grew up um, a long time ago, a long time ago. But I was a Marvel guy, and I just thought DC was ridiculous. Um, I feel the same way. I mean, I'm definitely more on the Marvel side of things as far as where my loyalties lie. And I'll be the first person to admit that Marvel did come a little bit after DC, and a lot of their characters are direct knockoffs yep. or competitors of DC characters. But they're improvements most but of the time. Most exactly, of the time, yeah. exactly. And um, they also don't have characters like Kite Man, who is a ridiculous uh, character, a ridiculous concept, but overall kind of a comedic relief. And I... As dumb as Condiment King is, he's very much the same thing. Oh, I remember Condiment King being a thing. You guys remember uh, Burger King? Um, their, I guess it still is a mascot, right? The King. Yeah, the King. Yeah. Several yeah. years ago, on the when that's the stuff in nightmares. Totally. When, uh, when the Xbox was released, 2001, 2002 era, Burger King released a series of games uh, what? with the King. Um, I need to bring those in. I have them. I don't and th like they that. They came with like Happy Meals or whatever the, the uh, Burger King equivalent is, King Meals or whatever. Um, Oh, 
but there's a couple of them. There's like uh, there's like Burger King Racing where it was kind of like this pocket bike thing. Uh, there's like a mystery solving one. But the other one, there's another one uh, that was called Sneak King, uh, and it was kind of like a Sam Fisher Metal Gear Solid game with the king. Really? really? But it's also the most horrifying thing because uh, the whole <laughs> goal creepy. of that game is to scare people and then give them burgers. So <laughs> you'd wow. go around like these populated areas and you'd have to hide. Yeah, the sneaking, Troy called it out. Uh, it was terrifying, but you'd have, to, you'd have to hide and wait for people to walk by and then you'd scare them and you'd be rated on like how you scared them, how close they were, what kind of like pose you did. And then you'd give them a cheeseburger and like everything would be fine. They're like, hey, I scared you and here's a pretty crappy burger. Yeah. It's, the, it's Burger King. Here, I gave you a heart attack, but enjoy this yeah. quarter pounder. Or whatever the the BK. That whole concept is just absolutely terrifying. It's also just terrifying. Oh, wow, I remember Pepsi Man. Uh, I actually just watched a speed run of Pepsi Man really? not too long ago. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> it's kind of a rail shooter, so the game just kind of moves like auto scroller wise, but you can boost and stuff, and so people use it for like speed strats. It's it's gnarly. That game's also incredibly difficult. Um, I know that you have moved on to the general fun questions, but I really need oh. to know, Jeff. Um. In a zombie apocalypse, what would your weapon of choice be? I saw that oh, one, really, right and now. I needed to one. throw it in. I feel like you'd have a... I mean, it can't be farts. Dang. It, it could yeah, be farts. It depends gonna, on how toxic the farts are. Probably not going to work that great, though. But a zombie apocalypse, like... Yeah, well, dude, that really, that really do brings into question the factory senses of zombies. I know, we first need to know, do zombie. zombies smell? Not physically smell, but can zombies smell? Or is it a sense thing? Or is it just so toxic that it melts their faces off? So right. I don't, I don't watch a lot of Walking bad. Dead. But no, you have to kill the brain. Yeah. And that's why, like, when I kill think about brain. it, and, and Quinn's saying that use something reusable, it's got to be something you can decapitate or, or get the head off. Yeah, because yeah. most zombies... Or something reusable that Quinn... Yeah. It's... Like a so, fart. I don't know if anybody here has watched The Last Kids on Earth. It's a Netflix kind of kids cartoon show, but it's it's post-apocalyptic and there's stuff it's there's based this, off of a book series it is that. yeah it's fun but there's a the jack uh the, the main character has this great baseball bat that's been um shaved off and busted and then one of the demons did like a spell on it or whatever i do something like that right so i can get really physical and then you know and stab or hit with it that sounds really violent it's it insane. does but at the same time kind of therapeutical because if zombie is already dead it doesn't necessarily matter if you i'm doing a, a favor i'm doing it a favor like, I feel like it would just be just getting that anger out because every now and then you just got to smash something. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, those days. I kind of had that yesterday. Yeah, it was like Quinn, Quinn's watched that show. I like it a lot. My daughter likes it. But it's pretty cool. Like Jack, he's an, he's, a, he's an orphan. And so like they're dealing with stuff and he's dealing with abandonment issues. And it's fun and funny, but also pretty serious at the same time. They, and exactly. Zombies aren't people. And there's some jokes out there about like that's the next step in our like political world is pretty soon it's going to be about zombie zombie lives matter and no they don't <laughs> no period because it's not alive <laughs> no life to begin with i mean yeah. step one in being a zombie is being dead you're dead yeah. right it's undead like i know that there's some argument out there about curing zombieism but at the same time like the thing is, is that they're dead, yep. they're rotted. Do you really want to cure them, bring them back to life, and then no. subject it, them to uh, a life of living out the rest of their days it's like a half-rotted corpse? Was that Fido? Was that movie about the zombie that they kept as a pet? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to keep that. It didn't no. end well. Yeah. And I feel like it's super inhumane to be like, yes, zombie, I'm going to cure you, and you have to live the rest of yeah, your life Yeah, you're like all this. this, and your brain's halfway, and you're, yeah, not good. <laughs> when did you screw everything up, but no one ever found out it was you? <laughs> every single day yeah i feel there's, like every day it's that same scenario <laughs> there's this thing called imposter syndrome that's very real mm, right. i can relate no oh, yes i think all of us can i so I, I i tell people this all the time like i i'm a successful professional which is mind-blowing every time i meet with my boss in the back of my head is this thing of just like He's finally going to realize that I've made it all up and I've been faking it this whole time and he's going to fire me. Oh, gosh. But he hasn't yet. So. It'd be great if we could all just wake up in two days. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Every day I come to work, I'm like, today's the day that right. he's going to figure out that I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and been, uh... Burn it down. You're done. This, might be, this one might be kind of interesting. What is the craziest thing one of your teachers has done? Oh, okay. 
So, well, this, okay, this is a crazy thing one of my teachers did, but it's because of a crazy thing we did. Um, we had a teacher that was, we, we were, in, in hindsight, hindsight's a powerful thing, isn't it? Um, we were horrible to this man. Um, like, he went on vacation, and so we put real estate signs in his house like he was trying to sell his oh, house. Oh, no. He was gone. That's just some of the stuff. But um, we were going to go TP his house one night. And it got out. It was around. And, of course, like we finally showed up late to go TP his house. And he was on the side of his house behind a bush with a baseball bat. And he had fallen asleep. He waited out there to attack us. That sounds more violent also like than it does. It was more funny. Like, I, don't, I don't believe he was going to like assault us. I think he was just trying to protect his property. But it was just funny that like we were late and he fell asleep um, out there doing that. Not too bad. Yeah, so you were that, a terrible child. Yeah. I know. I'm like, I'm like, wow. <laughs> uh, I I feel like I need to say something. Uh, my my parents are teachers. My dad uh, specifically was a shop teacher back then, um, and I wasn't necessarily I wasn't there for this scenario. But he tells me things that happen all the time in his class, uh, and it's interesting hearing the crazy thing that he did from the sources himself as a shop teacher. Uh, you can only imagine like all the weird stuff that kids would do. It was middle school, right? Yeah. Um, middle middle school kids. Oh, my alarm's going off. Uh, Nine o'clock. Um, middle school kids arguably shouldn't touch big power tools. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Not. I mean, unless like sure they they get proper training, but most middle school kids, I think everyone can agree, are kind of idiots, right? Um, and so. A, a lot of interesting happen, things happened at uh, a shop class my dad taught, but one of them that I specifically remember is uh, he had twins in one of his classes. Uh, it was twin girls, and they were operating a drill press at this time. And they didn't quite understand that if you were to take a drill or a drill bit, stick it into the chuck of a, of a drill, and then you'd have to take a chuck key and basically crank it down so it doesn't move, right? Um, after you would take your chuck key, you would remove said chuck, chuck key. And so in order to not lose these tiny little chuck keys to uh, tighten down the, the drill bits, you'd put like a chain or something onto yeah. it, right? Um, and so they would tighten down the drill. They'd leave it in there. They'd immediately turn on the machine and you know the drill bit would just spin, or uh, the chuck would spin. And so it ripped the chain out from the machine. And then it was just this spinning chain oh, God. <laughs> wrapping around. And now you would think like, okay, I'm not going to touch that. It's going to hurt, right? So I'm going to unplug the machine or I'm going to turn the machine off. No. So what do these two girls do? They take turns trying to grab it. And every oh. time this chain went around, it would just be like, ow, ow, <laughs> ow, 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 as they were trying to grab this thing. Keep trying. And you would think like someone would come to their rescue. Uh, my dad was in the background uh, immobilized because he was just laughing so hard. <laughs> and so... You stupid kids. Yeah. It's just like, just turn it off. <laughs> oh, my God. But they were just keep trying to grab it. It's, it's interesting. But it, it's funny hearing things like that now. And teachers would never be able to get away with that. People are too too sheltered. They live in bubbles nowadays. Um, but we would just laugh at stuff like that. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm still an idiot, says Quinn. No, I don't believe that. I, I do. Well, I, think, I don't believe that. <laughs> I think we, all, I think we all are a little bit, right? It, it's true. You know, um, so... I manage I manage uh, the state's background check unit among other offices, and so we run background checks on all kinds of people. Cool. We, we do almost two hundred thousand checks a year, <laughs> and uh, and I've been doing that work for a long time. And I feel like people that have criminal history tend to fall into one of three categories. And these are all technical terms that are very well thought out, right? There are bad actors. There are some people that want to do bad things to people. And this is a very small amount, honestly, maybe five percent. And then like 15% of people with criminal history, the second group, are people in addiction, right? So they're in addiction and they're expressing that addiction in criminal ways, robbery, etc. And the third group, like 80%, uh, the technical term I use for them, are idiots, right? Somebody made a dumb choice and got caught. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we could screen out idiots from having jobs, we'd have like a 99% unemployment rate. So yeah. Yeah, That's a shocking <laughs> number to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and another thing, uh, my dad said a lot of great quotes over the years, uh, and one of them that I, I live by to this day, I think it's actually the reason why I've, I'm probably still alive now, honestly, is uh, especially because you know, I, I ride motorcycles and drink the most safest thing, 
Uh, but because uh, of the thing my father said, I, I feel like I'm safer every day because I'm always thinking about this one thing. Uh, and it's that he is embarrassed to be the same species as some of these people and to always assume everyone's an idiot, um, which you kind of tend to do at times. It's kind of you're an idiot until proven guilty or uh, proven, proven otherwise. Me, until proven otherwise. Yeah. And just by kind of thinking about that all the time, you, you, you tend to be more careful about a lot of things you do or how you approach people. Yeah. More forgiving. Maybe. Exactly. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And sure. It's not probably the greatest way to live in, in constant fear that everyone around you is uh, essentially a complete moron, but until proven otherwise, it's kind of a good assumption to go on. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see what we got. Yeah. This sounds terrifying. Oh gosh. My shop, oh, from Quinn. My shop teacher filled a doll with ketchup and showed it to the girls why they need to tie up their hair, which after he drives to his point home, am I reading that right? He drives his point home is how the property clean the machines. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I horrifying. think I understand what he's saying, but <laughs> well, grammatically it's hard to you don't, read. You don't want to have long hair, uh, especially with machines with moving parts, because yeah. you're going to get sucked into those. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, can... <laughs> your shop teacher was a sadist. Uh, I can imagine that just being more, just morbidly and horribly wrong. That's, That's, That's someone who's got a lot of years teaching. Is like, you know what? I'm done explaining this. I'm just going to show you. Uh, we have another regular who pops in here all the time. Uh, we'll call him. We'll call him Commander. <laughs> <laughs> without using his name uh but he is he was also in the navy and is also a shop teacher he's got <laughs> he's got hours of stories this guy is phenomenal to talk to it's super super interesting i'm sure some people in the chat know who this gentleman is oh hey we got people going on hello cascadia all right let's <laughs> let's get a couple more questions here quinn got in trouble for oh, using foul language wow. not my, I oh my what, god I'd have to like, look at that in a second. I'm not sure what I put in for the filter. But... His entire, like, all of his oh. comments got deleted. Oh, no, quit. Not all of them. No, I can see them. Yeah, we can oh, see them. On, I can even see the one. On the mobile yeah, chat, you know... it literally just message deleted, message deleted, message deleted. Oh, no. <laughs> Quinn, you, wow. said a, you said a bad word. I don't know what wow. it, I'll have to look at it. what it was. My filter is probably Bitch. a little, uh. David's bot hates you. <laughs> oh, probably. Not allowed to say that. I will have to, I'll have to fix that one. I know. My, my, uh. <laughs> My bots are a little too aggressive, apparently. We gotta put a bot on Caitlin's mouth. Um, I've only dropped one f bomb today. Suck it. That's the no, <laughs> whole. Like I I feel like that's it, not true I at all. Like I, I, I was saying, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I only Replay remember video. dropping one f bomb. <laughs> we do have an aggressive bot. That's right. Uh, I asked Tom this question last time. But I feel like I want to ask it this time. Oh, I just lost it. Uh, what is the dumbest way you've been injured since we're on this topic? Oh wow! Think, think back. Oh, wow. Could be recent. You know, so, oh, gosh. It could be a minor injury. It could be a minor injury. It could be an injury to your pride. Yeah, it never or happens. Ego. I don't that doesn't happen. Yeah, that died a long time ago. Yeah, I, think, I mean, this sounds cooler than it is. I'll start the story with that, but it was in pro wrestling, in a wrestling match. Um, I was in Springfield, Oregon, and I was working as a manager, right? Bobby Heenan, Jimmy Hart kind of a thing. Um and so I wore a suit and I'm wearing like uh, dress shoes in there. In a ring, you want shoes with no, uh, no traction. So I'm in the ring and I, the point is I'm supposed to say some mean things. Somebody rushes the ring and, and, and gets me and I roll out. So, and I remember this really clearly. So he comes at me and he, he gets me and I push over and my knee, um, my, my, my whole leg moves except for my foot. And, uh, and it goes over. I ended up tearing the meniscus in my knee, and it popped. And, Ooh, been um, there. Yeah, it was, it was rough, and it hurt really, really bad. But the thing that was just, I mean, it was just so stupid because literally it was just, like, this is, in wrestling, this is the most common. Like, oh, I got pushed, and I, and I fall down. Like, when I trained to do a wrestler, we would three hours of just getting hit and fall, hit and fall, hit and fall. And, like, I had the worst injury to my knee ever because of the shoes that I wore in there. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a fun story, and it maybe doesn't sound as stupid, but like it was, it was just there was no reason for that to have happened. I mean, since we're still on the topic of stupid and dumb things, uh, whoever designed the knee in the yeah. evolutionary chain of things, that guy was an idiot. <laughs> Knees are designed so poorly. <laughs> so if we could just change evolution, that would be great. Um, I know injuries or knee injuries all too well. Uh, I've got a separated patella that I've been nursing for three years. Oof. Thank you, thank you, roller derby. Uh, what else we got here? We're running, running low on time. 
let's see anything anything else we want to fart out anything you want to plug well, you know, so I plugged a couple things, jeffaken.com. Big thing right now is my podcast, yes. Starfleet Leadership Academy. I've got a nice link for that, podfollow.com slash SFLA. This is a Star Trek uh, podcast told through the lens of leadership development. I spend a lot of time on this. It's really important to me. The, each episode is very well produced, I, I think. It's just me. It's not the two people talking. I script the whole thing, put in some fun sound effects in there but the goal is to watch every episode of star trek and pull out the leadership lessons that are in there but if you're following me on twitter at jeff t aiken that's t as in tonsils um you can or an a-k-i-n i always assume people know how to spell my last name and don't know what the t is i don't know but uh, you'll see all the podcast stuff and everything else I'm up to. Wherever you get podcasts from, I'm assuming? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, it's actually a really great tool, Podfollow. It's free if anybody out there has a podcast. But podfollow.com slash SFLA. You go there and it will open it up in, in your podcatcher there. So like I use Overcast on my iPhone. So I can go to Podfollow. It opens up in Overcast. It's a, it's a really great tool. Far out. I learned something. I did not know about that tool. Learn something every day because knowledge is power. Yeah, right. Exactly. All right. More well, you know. Jeff, I can't thank you enough for hopping on the show last second. Uh, I did have a guest I originally bailed. Jeff was so kind to hop on, and I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad a buddy of mine is back on the couch again. This is great. Another drummer. Right. 100% drummers on the on the couch. Yeah, right. So far. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely did a definitely hit up Jeff if you guys need any voiceovers. Uh, right. Or, or jam sessions. Yeah, our jam sessions. If you just want to jam, it's always fun. Hopefully man. when this pandemic ends, we can get back to that. Um, I do want to thank, again, our awesome sponsor, Madhouse Coffee Co. Thank you guys again so much for sending us this stuff. We wouldn't have been able to do the mixology segment without you. Uh, we had a really, really awesome time doing this. And I'm still incredibly caffeinated. And it's awesome. <laughs> um, you guys make some really good products. You have some amazing things on your menus. Uh, if you guys, again, haven't stopped by Madhouse Coffee Co. here in Vancouver, definitely go check these guys out. They're awesome. Uh, the owner is super, super nice. They've got a really great environment in there. Also, if you're hungry, they've got some really good uh, eating options as well. They've got a couple vegan options on their menu too. They're getting into that territory. Some good breakfast sandwiches. Lots of really rad stuff. They're cool. So, yeah, I, I think that's going to... That's going to be it for the episode three here. So, again, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. It's a, it's a blast. Had a lot of fun. It's been super interesting. So, yeah, thank you, chat. Uh, just another couple of quick announcements. We are Twitch affiliated. So, yes, thank you for those subs. Thank you for those bits. Um, we're going to be pooling a majority of that money and probably donating to a couple different charity groups here. I'm not sure which ones those are. Uh, hopefully, by episode four, we have, we'll iron that out because we just became affiliated. We're still trying to work out those kinks. Uh, also uh visit vault31store.com we we do have a merch store now it's been really hard for us to do it locally so we are kind of farming out through that website now um but yeah it'd be fantastic if you guys wore some vault awesome vault 31, 31 merch. store.com vault 31 store.com see now i could steal that sound bite <laughs> <laughs> can't wait uh yes thank you thank you everybody for the congrats i'm seeing that uh good show yes thank you guys uh thank you everyone for joining uh it's, it's been a blast we'll have this episode up on youtube for those that missed part of the segments um, and it's been rad. Anyone, anyone else want to say a, say a thing? No, I think, no? I think good. we're good. You summed everything up beautifully. Shoot. Good it's job. almost like you're a pro. Uh, it's almost like a pro. Episode three. Um, we're still working out kinks, obviously. Uh, sorry about the sound issues before. I'm so bummed I missed my, my original plug was muted. I, and it was <laughs> perfect. It, it was probably it was just perfect. me like weirdly surfing the internet and then there was just no audio. I'm kind of bummed. We're going to have to just redo it. We're going to have to redo it. Put it on Facebook it. or something. I know. I'm going to have to voice over my own voice. I'm going to get Jeff to voice my voice. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, vault31store.com. Check out some of our merch. Uh, wh uh, what else? Um, Y'all, we're going to end it on this, but there's a freaking election in a couple days. If you guys haven't voted, if you don't know who vote, you're voting for, get out there. Vote. Vote. Uh, vote, running vote, out of vote, time, vote, vote. get out there now. Go do it. Uh, wait, and or... pay attention to your local elections. What's happening federally matters huge. It's yes. massive. But your local elections, that's, that's what makes a difference in your everyday life. Yes. These are your home values. These are your stop signs. This is your traffic, your water rates, the things every day that impact you as an individual. Your city council, your city commission, your county commissioners, your state representatives, these things matter. So please pay attention to them and, and be and make an educated vote for them. And yes. if you're in Oregon City, vote for Jeff Aiken. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, uh, absolutely. That's a, that's a wonderful note to end on right there. That's absolutely beautiful. Um, I see some yes, I voted in chats. Awesome, vote or die. Uh, you guys, this, there's a lot in the stake, uh, or there's there's a lot in the ballot here. I don't think we have to necessarily you know beat a dead horse essentially, but uh, uh, it's a big one. So we'll we'll see you guys hopefully if November, if there is a November. <laughs> <laughs> there's a November. Right? Today's November first. Today's November. November. If there's the okay. rest of November, oh yeah. guys, it's November. It's it November. Is. That so happened. Good. That happened. It's it's amazing how much time has passed and how fast it has passed, given the fact that time lost all meaning. Like what was it three years ago yeah. now? <laughs> Ish. Right Give or there. take a few months. Uh, but all right. Thank you guys so much. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, please send us a message. Uh, if you feel like being a guest on the show, also send us a message. If you're a local small business or a streamer or anything that just wants to be a guest or a sponsor, again, let us know. It'd be awesome. Uh, have a good night, everybody. Appreciate it. Bye, March guys. 247. Love it. <laughs> March I miss 20. you already. So <laughs> I feel like this episode is going to go forever. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm terrified. And there's, there's a couple memes floating around that uh, we're all going to be staring at our calendars and our clocks, December 31st, uh, 11.59 p.m. <laughs> and as soon as that minute ticks, it's going to be 11.60, December 31st, and it's just never going to end. See, my <laughs> my biggest fear is that this is actually just one big, long Groundhog Day. Yeah, yep. yeah. And it's not going to be 11.60. It's going to be 11.59 on December 31st, 20, or 2020. And then... Yep. It's going to be midnight on January 1st, 2020, all over again. And we're just going to have to relive Whole kind thing. of, you know, two and a half okay-ish months. And then the rest of all of this all over again. <laughs> all over again. again. Uh, don't and, even say uh, that. Thank you to Senor Fartface for following because we are hashtag normalize farts. You're <laughs> making it happen. You're making it happen. Yes. Okay, so vote and hashtag normalize farts. <laughs> and I gotta change my bot apparently because Senior Fart Face wrote a very nice message. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, I'm gonna have to change some of the <laughs> the, the, the words yeah, in my dude, bot. Yeah, chill that thing out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, and and they edited their edited their post fast enough. That's really really great. Um, we need to end the episode, otherwise we're gonna be here forever. Jeff, thank you again for being on the you're show. Welcome. Thank, thank you, Caitlin, for, for the awesome me. cocktails. Thank you, Madhouse Coffee, for supplying said coffee for our cocktails. Uh, and have a good night, everyone. Appreciate it. Bye, guys.